Happy birthday. Oh, live. <laughs> yeah. By, by the way, we're live. <laughs> uh, and Happy birthday to in, Block. So, uh, welcome, everyone. This is the launch of the Block, uh, which is the Blockchain Leadership Oversight Council. And we're insanely happy that all of you are here uh, to join us today for this event that is going to hopefully fundamentally change uh, the blockchain space and bring a lot of uh, a lot of feelings of safety, feelings of you know trust, and so forth. Uh, but before we get into a little bit about what the block is, I want to introduce you to the people that have helped to create it <laughs> uh, and these great projects that are before you. And so I want to hand it off uh, first to Patrick, uh, that is the chair, and uh, let give him some opportunities to to speak. And uh, if you during the, before I hand it over, though, if during this time you have questions, this is an AMA. Uh, we will get started with a little bit of words from each of the projects first, just to give time for those questions to come in. Now, if yeah, if you, I can't speak, I'm too nervous. If you see, if you are entering questions and I do not see it, uh, please do not spam the chat. I will go in in the order that I, they are received. Uh, I'm receiving stuff from from Twitter, from YouTube, from all over. So please bear with me as I'm trying to get all of those questions uh, to get answered. Uh, there's going to be a lot to get through today. I'm pretty sure. And if I don't get to it today, we'll try to make sure that we get to it another time. Um, but the, and if you, of course, are watching this in the future, make sure to put a comment below and we will try to make sure that all of your questions are answered as well. Uh, but Patrick, I'm going to hand it off to you. Go ahead. All right. Thank you so much, JT. And it's really an honor to be here today with a group of really transparent and great founders who have uh, been a part of building this for almost a year now. We started back in February. So right after Reaper Financial launched in uh, December of 2021, we, we started looking for how do we do things right? How do we uh, align to what the SEC is going to ask from us? And how do we um, you know, do the things that would eventually come down on us as regulation? And really the, the problem was it doesn't exist. And the SEC being a centralized and unelected authority was never really fit to regulate a decentralized economy. So while I was actually interviewing John Deaton, the man himself, is when I initially had this idea about building out a standards organization where we would self-regulate on the blockchain and do things in a way that made sense without it being an authoritative uh, forced position that other projects would have to follow. So we started developing, the, developing this way back in February. And uh, with that, it's really taken on a life of its own. And we authored a, a full constitution and bylaws, code of conduct and values of what right looks like and more importantly how we can actually protect investors in ways that none of the regulatory authorities and none of the government agencies are doing and that's what we're all about so i'm going to pass it off to james ray from schmeckles so he can tell you his part in all this definitely so thank you patrick um if you guys don't know, it's not just the States, it's not just America, it's it's most countries around the world are having a lot of trouble with regulating cryptocurrency. A lot of governments struggle to even understand what it is. So as an example, in Australia, we do have a set of regulations, but we don't have a regulatory body who governs crypto. So it's sort of just a free space. So with the block, we can set up a set of regulations that are not an expectation of projects, but more so a... A, a, a grail that they can reach for, right? Like this is what we would like to see as a standard across the board. This is how we would like to see governments start to regulate cryptocurrency, not by, via backroom deals where they then take people to court, for example, like what we've seen happen with Ripple. But more so here is a set of expectations, a set of what we believe to be a, a healthy standard in, in this ecosystem that we believe projects should be striving for. Um, most of us are from projects of ourselves where, where we have trialed and tested these systems, these processes. 
so we can also then help others to reach this. Um, and and it's it's a group of great people here. Um, like Patrick said, we've been working together since pa since February. It's been a long, long time. It's been a lot of work, a lot of conversations. We've been meeting weekly. It's, a lot of these guys are doing two meetings per week. Um, so we're very excited for, for moving forward. So my personal position in, in, in the board of, of Block is the ethical officer. So I will help to keep the the the, the team, the, the blocks board uh, as, as above board as possible. So I'll take reports from the public, I'll take reports from the internal team and I'll investigate those reports and I'll work with the, the required authorities if necessary, the required third parties or potentially just the chairman and vice chair, depending on what those uh, reports are about to ensure that there's uh, protection for both the public as well as for the block as a entity moving forward. Um, so I'll leave it there for now from me, but I, I would love to continue speaking about lots of this stuff moving forward. So I think I'll pass it on to, to Classy Zoj, to William, who is the vice chair of the block. Thank you. And the Zoj project began roughly four months prior to the creation or founding of block oversight. Patrick shot me a DM and I was basically on board instantly with the idea because having come into the space with no no background, no support systems, basically nothing and everybody's on themselves, the learning of best practices and how to engage the ecosystem, things like that, no, there was nobody to help anybody. With foundational um, infrastructure like Block, new projects who could potentially be good projects um they now have resources that previously w weren't in existence and f for that um we will see a lot less uh, struggles in the space a lot less rugs and things like that but you know there's over six thousand projects uh, just on xrpl alone and this is a a multi-ecosystem thing block doesn't just service the xrpl it services many blockchains um, as long as they meet standards so um, there's a ton of resources and capabilities within Block and the projects that are members that people can, you know, gain help from. But as as a sitting vice chair currently, um, my role in Block is to be a tertiary line of support to all of the different roles in Block. I'm not usually the main backup for most of our, our infrastructure. There's usually somebody dedicated to that. But a good example of that is right now I'm I'm sitting in and in that role as well as CTO, and it it lends really well to what I do, which is multi-chaining and things like that. So everybody in Block has a very important role, and as more projects and people come into it, uh, we will be able to fill that out even better. And then I I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going to pass it off to Joshua Pauly with uh, Physical Digital. <laughs> <laughs> I got the ball. I got the ball. Hi, everybody. Right. Uh, happy to be here, Josh, uh, with Physical Digital. And I did join this team a little bit late in the game, but I'm really happy to uh, to bring some skills and contribute to uh, something that I think is is very um, it, it's proactive rather than you know th this came out of a reactive thing. But what we're doing is proactive in nature, in that we're we're helping projects to. Uh, meet a certain level of standard that is, uh, I think, more than than what the majority has out there. And, you know, and sometimes that's uh, in a consulting nature or what have you. But um, my position here is a security officer. So one of the things that I do is I will look at uh, late, later on in the processes uh, of onboarding, then I'll look at the information that's submitted from projects about their wallets, about uh, what their what the project is, what they're doing, and that kind of thing. And I'll go and just look to confirm that everything that they submit is true. And uh, if there's any questions, then I will usually connect with them and make sure that uh, that we know kind of exactly what's going on, and and uh, we form that kind of uh, a connection that you know it's. Uh, we're, we're all kind of supportive of each other. And that's one of the things that you do get when you uh, bring your project to the block. But uh, let's pass it over to Duncan. Well, Dun Duncan has been having some issues with lag. So Did you say Duncan, it to me? Hear this? Okay, yep. I think he's, he's just caught it. So it's all yours, Duncan. <laughs> 
You're good. Whenever you're you're up. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we yeah, can. We got you. You're coming in loud and clear. Great, great, perfect. Uh, so my name is Duncan, uh, and I'm CEO of uh, Treasury XRPL, um, and uh, super excited to be here for launch of Block, which has been very many months in the making, uh, planning. Um, and getting everything into place. Um, so really excited to see it starting to come to life. Uh, where do I slot in regards to block? I slot in as onboarding officer. So that would come uh, right at the beginning of projects and individuals wanting to join block in an official capacity. Uh, they, would, they would start their process block socials to go on the website where you'll be able to see initially there's a self-assessment on there to gauge initial eligibility of your project uh, to join block and following that you will then be able to uh, contact uh, onboarding via form uh, and then open up channels with myself and my role really slots in in a kind of an advisory role to uh, meet with you this your sharing the block constitution, the bylaws, the code of conduct, all of the documents and the underwritings that you would be required to agree to abide. Um, and through that process, it kind of gets you ready for the next stage, which is when it is runs the auditing. So we've worked incredibly hard to try and streamline the process so that people are guided through it. And one thing I would add to the comments that the other gentlemen have said regarding block is it's very important for me anyway, and I'm sure uh, you guys will echo it, uh, to stipulate that block isn't there in, in a kind of a policing style structure. Block is there to celebrate the very good actors on the blockchain, uh, the projects that how, want to hold them the, themselves to a higher standard uh, and is there to present those, those projects. So really excited look forward to hopefully onboarding very many projects that are listening in now or will be listening back to that in the future thank you very much well i guess that uh that might leave me <laughs> um so i am uh you you all may know me from the community i'm jtxrp and really happy that uh to be here and to be a part of this. And so I was uh, invited to, to come and help. I'm actually the chief of operations. I'll, I also sit on the board of the block of block oversight, or I guess we're just calling it the block now. Um, so I am super excited because I've got to help with some of the processes to be a voice for, um, you know, the con, you know, of course, content creator side of things, as well as uh, just be able to really try to make sure that you know as a content creator you have questions and you have the scrutinies that you know which we want to hear more of we're going to get feedback it's one of the reasons that we're we're doing this right is to hear y'all's questions be able to answer them and to even grow from this and so i'm i'm super excited to see this develop i feel like this this movement this uh, organization which is a 501c3 nonprofit out of uh, texas by the way uh, and does have a board, but the General Assembly uh, can over can overrule the board uh, at different many points uh, as long as votes are taken appropriately. And again, that's all in our bylaws. You can go to our website and uh, and take a look at that. Uh, but it's extremely exciting to me because you know I as a content creator, we always say you know, hey, not financial advice, just in case something goes wrong. How amazing would it be? I mean, we may still have to say that for legal reasons. But at the same time, and none of this is, by the way, <laughs> but, um, you know, how is being able to promote good projects in the space without fear of something happening in the future and knowing that the people are are good actors in the space. So it doesn't prevent everything all the time. And block is not going to be perfect, but it is going to set an extremely high standard that uh, some projects, uh, especially bad actors, are not going to be able to to do <laughs> um, unless they're 
yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to be able to do well, it. So just we'll to see. that comment, JT, even if bad actors were to get through, part of the security onboarding process will be to hold, withhold the information of those individuals, which we can then pass on to the authorities. So while we won't act as cops on the beat, we'll at least have the information on these bad actors that we can then pass on to the cops on the beat, if that makes sense. It does. Um, right. And on that note, I would just like to throw in that none of this is a guaranteed as far as projects within the lock we do the absolute best that we can to check into them check into their project do the auditing get to know the individuals running the project ensure that they're following best practices and a general guideline of how to handle most situations can be achieved through block that guidance that most projects don't have at their inception can definitely sway whether they become a good project or a bad project. Our goal, like Joshua Qualley had said, is that we're proactive in our approach. We want to make sure that there's a lot less problems. We can't guarantee that there won't be any problems. However, through what we've all learned cumulatively and our mission statement, our intent, our constitution, bylaws, and things like that, we are absolutely certain that at minimum, we will significantly re reduce issues in the space and not just the XRPL, other other chains, as I had, had already stated previously. But uh, Patrick? Yeah, ab absolutely. So what we've done here is essentially created the framework for improvement of a decentralized space into a structured space that is still very much free and capable of innovating capable of moving but we've set such a high standard that for example bitcoin would not meet your meet our standard and you're going to see why in a minute so we've basically built something here for a a trustless organization to have a framework for trust in that there would be consequences for any uh project that didn't follow the block uh, rules that was a member of block. And also we're going to be hosting uh, through Reaper, a bug bounty program. And if, uh, if anyone out there can tell us a project that did not, uh, would have been able to meet all of our constitutional standards and our onboarding process and was still a rug pull, then we would love to know about that. And I will uh, give you 1000 XRP to the first person that brings me one and then we'll fix it and we'll uh, we'll move on from there. So that's basically a reward and improvement program for us to continue to build out these standards uh, to uh, restrict and prevent rug pulls in the future. Outstanding. I just wanted to quickly jump in as well and, and just make a comment generally about these regulations and, and standards that we're setting. Um, projects still fail, even if they have the absolute best intentions in mind. If, if it's a really good business, it can still fail. So um, the block cannot protect against a business failing. Um, we do have some thresholds within our onboarding and security process, which will try and 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 flesh some of that out to support those individuals who may be in like a bad financial position, for example. But ultimately, if a project doesn't have the uptake from the community um, and potentially just burns out or who knows, there's so many things that can happen that make businesses fail. The block can't protect against that. It's just, um, it's, it's impossible. Um, the other thing, JT, I will pass it back to you because uh, there's a few other people who aren't here. So this isn't the full group of blocks. So JT, maybe you wanted to just talk to who those individuals are. Yes. Uh, so Fred Rispoli is the uh, legal counsel for the block and also sits on the board. And um, besides that, I think every like who, who am i forgetting it's been i'm sorry it's been a rush trying to make sure everything's going uh so we, we so we, we definitely we could... have other we have other members so for example uh the additions project has gone through the onboarding and security process and, and they are part of block now um equally uh Jeremy from uh, the Astrals on X project has has also gone through the onboarding process um and is a member of block yes um, so I, w I was thinking just board members. I was like, man, I really hope I'm not forgetting someone, <laughs> but all right. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm trying to balance everything. And by the way, if you are on Twitter, if you are on LinkedIn, I will not be getting your questions because apparently it's the software we're using is not getting all of those to me. So please head over to YouTube. Uh, if you're watching on there, 
uh, on, on either Twitter or LinkedIn and put your questions there because we want to do make sure to get to them. But I just did receive an error that for some reason they are not loading. So with that being said, uh, why don't we get into some of the questions, guys? Um, and then we'll head over to the Constitution after some of those questions. Sound good? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second, and we're going to get to some of the questions. And our first question uh, that we got, I believe, in order is, have any of you seen uh, this crypto bill that Ben Armstrong or BitBoy supposedly has sponsored now and claims that he has shown John E. Deaton is Block working on their own bill? So I'll, I'll feel that one. So I'll say that Block does plan to work with regulators and uh, in a educational sense to help the regulators to understand blockchain as a decentralized entity as a whole and what good regulation might look like as opposed to necessarily writing a bill or pushing a bill. Uh, ben Armstrong himself, BitBoy, probably wouldn't meet our standards given some of his previous behavior. So uh, we're not too concerned about any bill he's writing. <laughs> and just for the record, guys, Duncan is having connectivity issues. So he's just popping out to try and come back in. Cool. Um, well, if that answers that, awesome. If not, uh, please make sure to put follow-ups inside. We'll try to get to them as we go. We will be going over to the Constitution after a couple questions just so we can show you all and it'll probably prompt even more questions. So uh, just bear with us. But we'll go through a couple. Wait, see if we can get Duncan back. And uh, yep, this next is from Gotta Be. And uh, our government regulators can be bought. What is your price? And so that's an extremely good question. <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, it's not a Snickers bar. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Block is completely non-monetized. Everybody that has joined the Block is not getting paid to do so. There is no Block token. We are not accepting donations at this time. So everyone here has spent almost you know a year or, or um, in Josh's case, a few months of of their life working diligently on this project for no compensation whatsoever with no expectation of future compensation. So I would say we don't have a number and uh, you, you'd you be very hard pressed to find a more um, integrity driven group than the people you see in front of you today. Yeah, And if there is any, any questionable activity that anyone hears about either both within block or outside of the block please report it through to me because that is it's absolutely against the ethics of this organization and it wouldn't we will not be standing for anything along those lines so while i know it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek gotta be um absolutely not there, there is no price yeah right. so i just want to throw in real quick uh, to james's point you can go to the contact if you know of any uh bad behaviors uh you can actually report it uh, to uh, to James himself, you can go in the contact form, and uh, there is a drop down for ethics, and you will receive, he'll receive your emails, and so, um, I believe everyone in this project is uh, doing pretty amazing. So, uh, but we will be investigating all of those things uh, to the best of our ability. Now, again, it is not just about us, right? Because the different projects that join Block will make up the organization. And they will also have, uh, we are the board, We're, we are helping to set that direction. Uh, and we help to drive the organization, but it is the the volunteers and the other leadership that join that are a that are going to be uh, what, what really moves uh, in that space and their volunteerism uh, to help move the space together. So sorry, Classy, go ahead. Yeah, awesome. And that's actually a really good question, but, um, gotta be i just gotta say to you and everybody else everybody in here um except for jt and fred with legal well fred has his own business but every one of these is is a company they have a profit model or a capability of generating revenue legitimately and block doesn't have any um inward or outward facing uh, material that is for sale or could be for sale and uh, any attempt to you know, bribe somebody in block would be very, very unsuccessful because um, it's all done by an equal system of votes. Um, I, I regularly get outvoted on things that I vote for. And if you were to buy somebody in block somehow, which I highly doubt you could even manage to bribe one, much less buy one, um, you wouldn't get the whole consensus of the group. 
um, and, and you would definitely, uh, you, you would be known like the other ones more than likely as soon as you made an offer like that, everybody would know about it in block. Yeah, but there are guards and protections. I encourage everyone who has that particular question to look at our bylaws and look at how the organization is set up because uh, we put a lot of thought in trying to prevent exactly that issue. So there's a reason why it took us so long to launch. <laughs> I think it's a good thing here to, to mention the fact that uh, conflicts of interest, financial conflicts of interest are something that we talk about when we're going through our onboarding process and our auditing process, right? To make sure that, uh, you know, if there is somebody that has a significant stake in any of the pro uh, with, with any of the founders here that we, um, are aware of it and that, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if need be, then that, that person, whoever has that, that, uh, that, uh, relationship, then somebody else would be, uh, available to vote for that. Yeah. And I just add to this, that, uh, the block structure is not a permanent structure of leadership. Everybody here will have a, a term limit and there will be an election by the General Assembly to replace us, myself and everyone else included. Uh, we're not here to do this uh, for the rest of our lives. This is an organization which started as a democratic organization that will uh, build into the future what blockchain looks like as if it was a decentralized government. And uh, with that being said, y'all, let's... We can move on to our next question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Yep. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. It's one of the first ones being asked. I was like, man, I, it's great. Um, thank you, Gotta Be. Uh, next is from James Anthony. Shout out to you. Uh, how can we really, uh, how, sorry, how can we rally and get the community to support this in any way uh, that can show strength in numbers? Uh, so I've actually these... seen this. Yeah, this question has popped up quite a bit and it's not, it's, it's been repeated from a few people. And I think the, the best way is to spread awareness. Um, I think that's probably the strongest support that the block can have, especially now as we're just launching, so sharing a tweet, liking and following us on, on social media, um, just spreading the word around what we're doing and, and how we're doing it, as well as if you are a project yourself and, and you're interested in, in, in being part of this, this, this thing that we're building. Um, let's get, get in contact with us and, and Duncan will we'll have a chat with you on, on, on onboarding. You'll eventually talk to Josh and do the security audits. So um, that's that's probably another way that you can support us. Uh, but ultimately, awareness right now is probably the, the biggest thing that we need. This is a fresh organization. Even though we've been building for so long in the background, the public will, will still be very, very new to what we're doing. And I would add to that, uh, if you're invested or part of projects that have never heard of Block, you might propose yeah. to them, hey, is this a Block compliant project? Does it plan on being a Block compliant project? And that's actually a great question for you to protect yourself, because if they say they are not interested in Block, it's probably a red flag once, you, once you've seen what we've built here and why the things exist. So it's it's going to be a way for the investors in other projects to hold those devs accountable and if those devs don't meet block standards there's a reason for it and you should start asking questions i wanted to add real quick that uh one of the things that you know the people you see before here today uh and you you will see a lot on my channel and the reason for that is because i've stopped for the for the besides the extremely rare exception that may have already applied to block or been a part of this process. And uh, there's, I'm not going to be covering anyone else besides block projects for my channel. Um, so that is, and I think if other content creators did the same and didn't, you know, it, it would greatly help to increase that validity. Now, would that be limiting? Absolutely. And I understand that that may not work for everyone. And, but I think for me, uh, it's going to be like, I, I know what we've worked on and I know what we've built and I know the people that are here and I just cannot imagine, you know, promoting anything that hasn't undergone this uh, myself. So I think what, what Patrick's is, is straight on point, you know, why, you know, if you, if you ask a project, you know, why are they not block compliant? Oh, we haven't gotten around to it yet. And it's been six months. I still haven't gotten around to it. I'd be like, okay, <laughs> uh, my, my, that might definitely be a red flag in my mind. And I have people messaging me from other projects and I'm like, Hey, you know, as soon as you, you know, apply to the block and, and pass, I'm happy to talk with you more, 
But for me, this is where I'm going to be drawing the line to help protect the people that I am uh, that are viewing my my channel because I don't want to take content down. I won't have to deal with uh, the, the lack of sleep at night for, you know, for people that yeah, yeah, misinformation, yeah. lost money, you know, all the people that may seem great whenever they reach out to you in your DMs and get you get them on your channel, but then they do something horrible. So uh, I really think I have to do everything I can. And I think that if the more people take that that mindset, that it will be helpful to the space. So that's just me. Uh, anyone else have anything before we move on? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I have a slightly more pessimistic view on this. I do believe, unfortunately, that people tend to be a bit more reactionary, especially with cases like throwing tremendous amounts of money at, at exchanges that they have no transparency like FTX. And I don't want to get into that, but from from the inception of crypto, we've been told not your keys, not your crypto. And a lot of good speakers giving us best practices I know I've been tweeting for months uh, various protections that people could take to, to help them and reduce the odds that they will have any trouble. But, um, you know, people tend to do things after the fact. And I think that as Block proves validity over time by giving, you know, good standpoints, articles, things to that effect, and then more, unfortunately, more problems occur in the space. Uh, the cohesion will come to us. We won't necessarily have to chase it, but also in chasing it, I don't think we'll be entirely successful just due to the fact that most of the space and most people are reactionary. They don't worry about the fire department until there's actually fires occurring. Then all of a sudden they say, why didn't they have the resources? So we're seeing the same thing in government. We're addressing those issues. Um, Obviously, a lot of things will get past uh, us because it's impossible in scope. However, as time as time goes on, block can become much larger because infrastructure has to be built before funding and accreditation can come to it. Um, well, that being said, we'll move on to answer one last quick question. I think we'll head into the Constitution since we got uh, Duncan back and we can move forward uh last one that we're going to take uh for until we get done with the constitution is this one it's from gotta be uh it's the next question the row that i see at least um do you plan on branching out or will you strictly stay on the xrpl and i want to answer this and i wrote uh, <laughs> go ahead <laughs> never mind, james go ahead <laughs> i don't need to say much more i'm just going to point out william because william yeah. is is currently on pretty much every single good blockchain out there <laughs> Um, he's, he's a one man army, really. It's, it's quite fascinating, but, um, I will compliment a few people, which we probably will get to a little later on, but, uh, the block has not only been built by XRPL projects. The block has been built from, uh, other people who have come and consulted with us and, and worked with us on, on, on creating the, the framework that we currently have. So, um, we are definitely multi blockchain. This is for all of cryptocurrency. Really. It's, um, it's not limited to the XRPL. Yep. Te technically my project is on songbird i haven't launched yet yep. one on xrp yet <laughs> awesome uh, but yeah i want to make sure that you know if you're on ethereum and if you're on all these other ones you know it, it's there's a lot of projects here that maybe have started this effort but we really want and encourage and we need the entire blockchain space to unite and to be able to push this technology uh and do it you know in a way that's with way that's ethical a way that you know, values human rights, a way that, you know, is good and going to be helpful to the rest of the world rather than uh, whatever the opposite of that is, which we don't want. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump into the Constitution. Um, I'm going to hide the current comment. There we go. Uh, let me do this. I had another one before. I like you this might, better. You might need to blow it up a little bit so they can actually read okay. it. Okay. Um. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, there you go. All right. If you can get that to the even further zoomed in, will be unreal. Like to the whole sides, the extension of there. Yeah, there we go. All yeah, right. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of start this off on the Constitution. So the Blockchain Leadership Oversight Council is what Block stands for, and you you see our logo, which uh, you know we can do a little explainer on the logo a bit later. It's esoteric is all things they do. Um, so on the 27th day of February, 2022 is when we first ratified this. 
uh, we founders and entrepreneurs within the blockchain technology sector hereby ratify the Blockchain Leadership Oversight Council, or Block. Uh, the purpose of the Block is to regulate by voluntary participation the landscape of which blockchain products are offered to the public by recognizing the following consumer rights. So I'm going to take a little segue right there. So. When the American Constitution was first founded, a lot of people don't know this, but there was a huge battle to get a Bill of Rights into the Constitution, and they actually failed to do so uh, initially. So we, when we built this Constitution, we focused first on the consumer and the Bill of Rights of the, the end user uh, before focusing on the structure of the um, so-called government, as it were. So this is really all focused on you and what the different blockchain, what our companies, what Reaper, Zoe, Schmeckles, Treasury, Physical Digital, JT, what we owe you. And this is not us claiming any rights. It's us telling you what you deserve. So with that, uh, I'll pass it off to whoever wants to take number one. I'll take number one. Uh, the right to know the origins of the investment bodies and those personnel who are participating in the management of a monetary product. It is the official position of the block that only those monetary products which publicly disclose the identity, local locality, and percentages of control in a blockchain vehicle may be regarded as legitimate products. A legitimate project will make themselves publicly visible and available for reasonable questions from their community. So this is this is basically talking about doxing, right? So there's a lot of projects out there, and this is kind of where business myopia comes in, is that because blockchain started with Bitcoin and Bitcoin was Satoshi Nakamoto, who was completely anonymous and unknown, you know, a, a ghost of a figure, um, there was a, an, a propensity by future blockchain companies to decide that everything that happened in cryptocurrency needed to be anonymous. Now, that might have been good for the initial launch of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin for its survival to date. However, for us to move into the next phase of Web3 and to where companies and countries are using this technology and your your parents, your grandmother, your grandfather, your sister, your little brother, you know, the people you care about in your lives, for them to be using this technology, do we really want the people and the forces behind it to be anonymous or do we want people to be accountable and transparent? And so with this, we've basically said that you have a right to know who you are entrusting with your finances and with the, the well-being of your family. And uh, yeah, put comments or questions below. And uh, who wants to get number two? <laughs> I'll jump on to number two. So the right to disclosure. Legitimate blockchain products must provide the public with a document regarding its formation. Informally, we refer to this as a white paper. This founding document provides a foundation of why the product exists, what utility or reason for existing it has, the delegation of its governance and the plan for the future growth and sustainment of the asset. It is the position of the block that blockchain products that do not offer this disclosure are illegitimate and cannot be recognized. All block members must agree to an individual disclosure of background for each block representative and to represent the values and code of conduct of the block. I like that. You know, it's if a person that equates that to, it's very similar to what in a traditional business environment, if you were going to go start a business, uh, get a loan uh, from the bank, uh, if you were looking for financing, then you would have to have a business plan. And so, you know, when you go through and you do a white paper, it's very similar to the a business plan and the who, what, when, where, why, what's the sustainability, what uh, are the inputs, what are the outputs, is it uh, can does it have does it have traction is it uh you know this i don't think this doesn't really apply to those projects that um are just 
you know, doing onesie twosies, like, uh, you know, one, one piece here, one piece there. Uh, I believe what we're looking at is people that are more doing something that is, uh, is delivering more and is planning to be around for a long time. Yep. We want people that are, especially in block, we definitely want people that are wanting to help move the space that are passionate about blockchain technology and, uh, and have a, a use case for it as you know, uh, or in this case, we also have, you know, Zoj and, uh, and, you know, Schmeckles here, and they are extremely good examples of good actors in the space that, um, you know, that are community based and, you know, that, and that's, you know, that's also something we take into account. So, um, yep. Anyone else have anything for number two? Nope. All right. Who's got number three? Oh, I'll grab that one. All right. I'll jump the right. The uh, go for right, it, Duncan. So I know you're access. a bit lagging. Consumers. <laughs> okay. Uh, the right says, consumers have the right to view information via website and receive longer written communication from blockchain companies through social media interfaces. Teams or employees of companies should be within reason available for open communication. No product should be considered legitimate without such available access. So what we're talking about here with the right to access is effectively, if you have a problem, if there's something that's gone wrong uh, with your, your financial investment where you have put your money into a product, you have a right to you know, have some support, some tech support, some uh, explaining something from that development team or community uh, is expected. So there shouldn't be any project out there that's, you know, just throwing out a digital token and then you can't actually reach anybody when there's an issue. And that is something that uh, we recognize especially in these projects in front of you, I don't think there's a single project in front of you that you wouldn't be able to get a, a response from within probably a couple of hours. Cool. Uh, Class, you got four? Yeah, uh, number four, the right to progress. A consumer should reasonably expect that a technological product it is in the pursuit of progress. Companies and products must have a reason to exist, growth intentions, and a clear mission, which is readily stated to a customer. And this just means basically it's not invalidating um, a meme like Zoj, which is a great example, because even memes technically do have an intent and purpose if, if they're, um, you know, driving a speculation based market and uh, facilitating a good market for that. This just means that um, the projects have to be working towards more or, you know, actually doing things. They can't just be stagnant. And the main, the main purpose of this is to prevent people from, you know, just feeling like their project leads or the project that they've got something going with it is just falling completely flat. Yeah, and I would add to that. So one thing a lot of people don't realize when they're the on the consumer side of this is that for a developer, launching a project is very much like having a baby. You have to nurse it, you have to feed it, you have to grow it, and it's going to be there the rest of its life. Uh, launching a, a blockchain token, regardless of what exchange or what uh, blockchain it's on, you're putting something out into the, into the universe, into the ecosystem that you can't take back. It's decentralized. People now own it and they have a right because they own that product that you put into the universe. They have a right to expect that it's going to be worth something in the future. Even if it's not worth monetary value, they have a right to expect it's going to have a utility or a use case or something that wasn't there without it existing. Gotcha. Um, wanted to move on to, to five. Um, 
Josh, can you that. get that for us? Okay. Yeah, so the right to accountability. Uh, for any project to be uh, uh, accountable, it should be backed by a legal company, corporation, or other legally registered entity, which must be publicly disclosed. The organization of a project uh, of a product as the offering of a company raises the bar of ethical standards and provides customers avenues for legal reproach in the situation that a member of that company commits an illegal act. Any blockchain product that is not directly tied to a registered legal entity cannot be considered as a safe investment, given there's no ethical uh, obligation of an individual has provided no contract with the consumer. Um, and, and so one thing that I'd like to mention here is that there is different types of uh, classifications in, in different jurisdictions around the world. In Canada, we have something called, uh, we have essentially three tier. So we have, you know, if you as an individual, just, you know, you're going out, you're doing your thing, you're buying, you're selling things on, you know, secondhand markets, what have you. Uh, we have, if you wanted to be something called a sole proprietor, um, that's where you have a registered name and you have to track that business, the business uh, investments and taxes separately, but it's combined with your personal uh, income at the end of the year. And the uh, there is no legal protection for the individual from the business side that is one and, and the same. And that is currently what I am. And then you have uh, limited or corporate, which has a separate legal classification. So um, when it comes to accountability, um, for, for myself, one of the reasons why I try to do uh, and be as, as upfront, reachable and transparent as possible is because I can personally be held legally accountable. I don't have any kind of a corporate protection in place. Um, so the, the bar for me needs to be higher. And uh, it's one of the reasons why um, uh, I have my personal cell phone number available for people to c connect with me. Yep. I want to jump in here just real quick. This is already a worldwide organization. We have Duncan here who is in the UK. We have Joshua who's in Canada. We have James from Schmeckles. And uh, we also have some other, uh, sorry, he's from Australia. He's not from Schmeckles. He's from Australia. <laughs> uh, but I, I keep thinking of his NFTs and like the land of Schmeckles. Um, but yeah, so we, we definitely encourage, and if you're in a, a different jurisdiction, we've already been been dealing with that. You, you as a new project, would already be providing richness, and uh, we would love to get as much coverage uh, from people developing the blockchain space all around the world. Uh, but of course, you know, make sure that uh, these rights are covered, <laughs> but we'll continue. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go ahead and read number six, since I think since we've got through everyone already. Uh, the right to financial disclosure. It is the position of the block that as blockchain and cryptocurrency items are traded publicly amongst consumers, they must uphold a reasonable level of transparency relatable to a publicly traded company. This means that all legitimate blockchain products will provide a publicly disclosed uh, prospectus, income statements, balance statements, and ownership disclosure no less than annually. This is assessed on a case-by-case -case basis uh, as it fits the model of the individual project. Um, yep. Uh, we'll let one of y'all talk about that one because I'm not a project. So. Yeah, so I'll, I'll field that a little bit. So okay. I, obviously Reaper Financial is going to, uh, our aim is to be a financial company for blockchain products with a suite of services and we understand that basically everybody who's invested in either reaper ascension arc or any of these other projects is basically a shareholder now shareholders of publicly traded companies do have certain rights and are afforded certain things under you know the securities act well clearly you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain products do not fit the Howey definition of securities. They, we, we've had this discussion, it's kind of been beaten to death. Uh, and there needs to be a new framework and a new structure. So what we decided was this is a easy ask that can be met by any reasonable company to provide this financial disclosure. So there is no excuse not to provide it, uh, just because we are not a security right and on that note guys i'd just like to say that um currently many exchanges are squirming to try to provide 
some kind of transparency on their assets held backing their customers' funds that they've received, and they don't want to do it. And that's why this is so important, because in the shadows is where the bad people work. What's even worse than that with the exchanges, just to speak to that comment, they've been sharing funds between exchanges, between the US and, and the China and things like that. It's really wild what's going on behind the scenes. And I really like just the comment as an Aussie, like the SEC chasing projects is just the absolute incorrect method. They should be chasing these centralized exchanges to protect the masses. And that's that's where their focus should have been from the get go. And I hope it is one of their focuses moving forward. Well, Sorry. no. On that note, too, it's kind of funny that they're chasing non-fraud cases um, over fraud cases. It's just wild, unbelievable. Yeah. I totally agree. But let's uh, let's get back to the Constitution and how it will help those things in the future. Maybe uh, who wants to take seven? Uh, I'll take it. Uh, okay. So the right to neutrality. All those companies recognized by the block must strive to be non-exclusive. Discrimination of any kind is not appropriate within a global financial system. Participation in or endorsement of discrimination based on race, color, gender, sexual orientation, religion, age, or any other human condition will not be tolerated. Support of hate-based organizations will be strictly forbade by this organization. No investor should ever incur a financial loss because of the bias of a member of the blockchain community. So basically what we're saying here is that, uh, you know, blockchain is a global implement and the intention of blockchain is to help humanity as a whole. It is not to help one group uh, surpass another group. It is to quite literally empower everybody. And so we, you know, as we said, we won't tolerate any kind of discrimination. Myself, coming from a, a background in the army, I, I'm very used to that. Um, and I think everybody in, in front of you is is very, um, I, I don't even want to use the word tolerant, uh, very accepting of, of everybody. Uh, however, we, we understand there are some, you know, populations out there that still think less of other populations. And, and unfortunately, those will not be permitted into this organization until they essentially grow up and uh, are able to accept everyone on equal footing. Mm. Well said. Uh, when I want definitely want to get this. We have a ton of questions coming in about all these, and I know we have uh, quite a bit to get through. So I'm just going to move on to eight real quick. Who wants to grab eight? I'll jump in. The right to ecosystem support. It is reasonable to expect that all legitimate companies which host a future forward blockchain product should strive to support or aid in the advancement and operation of their ecosystem. Further, it is reasonable to expect that in general, a company should work in the best interest of the larger community. So it's not just the, the individual project, it's the ecosystem and trying to support it that is the focus. Most definitely. And being a part of block could simply be that fulfilled, right? So mm -hmm. uh, giving back to the ecosystem through a, a board like the block or through a, being a member of the block. Yep. And being a member, uh, you know, we, we definitely encourage people to volunteer to help. You know, it's not just, you know, you said that being a member of block could be a part of that. Yes. Uh, but you can, uh, we encourage people that are members to be a part of the different subcommittees we've set up you know each one of these individuals before you heads up part of these subcommittees and so they are needing volunteers and want to vo want to collaborate with other leaders in the space to be able to help build block um and it's in its different ways so if you want to participate in onboarding you know duncan will be able to help assist you if you want to be able to participate in ethics and help make sure the block stays the great organization that it's supposed to be you can uh hit up James and, and all the others and so forth. So uh, just wanted to say that we we are a 501c3. We're a nonprofit. We are here and we need your volunteerism as leaders in this space as well for those of you that are projects or uh, individuals based on uh, in our, our other criteria. So um, I'll, let's move on to nine. I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, the right to security uh, is the right of consumers to reasonably expect that companies handling the funds 
and or private information of customers should do their due diligence and working to safeguard the personal information of their investors. All block organization or sorry, all block recognized companies will undergo a security audit to ensure uh, the safety of consumers. And I think it only fitting that I hand that off to Josh, our security officer to talk about that for a second. Okay. So um, let's talk about security. Um, you know, it's, it's important to have uh, to, to know that the project knows about cybersecurity. They are doing things to protect themselves. Um, they're handling the, their own keys responsibly. They've got some kind of a process that, um, you know, even multi-sig is really nice uh, if it's possible, but that um, they are uh, also doing things that if they are taking um, personal information, like shipping, receiving, or their shipping product or, or what have you, that they are keeping that um, personal information private, right? And so something to add to this is that when projects come and go through the process with us, we make sure that that uh, all that information is held uh, very judiciously and in a safe way with uh, limited access. Yep. So we can you take just a few seconds to talk about the audit. Sure. Yeah. So the audit, uh, it's a it's a longer form document. Uh, it comprises two different parts. So there's a disclosure piece, um, and we just want to make sure uh, you know that the the person is. Uh, is doing ha, has a history of doing the right thing in the uh, in the industry that they don't have a a, a past that is uh, could be a potential risk to new investors or to the block, and that they go through and they're filling out the who, what, when, where, why of their project, and that once they go through this document, then you know you can be you can reasonably assume they know their their business their industry um, what what they're trying to do how they're trying to do it and that they're communicating that properly to um, to their uh, to the customers and to the people that they're doing business with and so what I do is uh, I would go through that document and I, I verify it awesome um, who wants to get ten yeah I can get ten cool ten the right to technical proficiency that consumers of a blockchain technology have a reasonable right to assume that all blockchain companies are using sound technical practices and that those technical details are plainly and publicly stated for all consumers to review. It is, it is as always, the responsibility of the consumer to research DYOR and decide on the acceptable level of risk based on the blockchain company has disclosed. So I, I would comment on this that uh, we're not just talking about small uh, blockchain projects here. This would apply very much to something like Luna in which Luna had a algorithmic pegged uh, stable token. And clearly they lack the technical proficiency to maintain that peg. And that is why $60 billion was wiped from the market and all of crypto as a whole suffered as the result of their lack of proficiency in their space. Yep. Um, uh, who wants 11? I can do that. So the right to fiduciary duty. Uh, a, a consumer has the right to expect that uh, should a blockchain company take custody of any customer assets for as, any reason, I think the example here would be staking, um, the customer must still maintain total ownership of the personal assets. Uh, custody does not equal ownership. The blockchain company should never borrow against lend nor leverage any consumer assets for any reason. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people got into cryptocurrency because they were sick of the banks doing this with fractional reserve lending, lending money that they didn't have and creating just excess risk for everybody involved through this whole system. And, you know, we seen in 2008, the kind of the consequences of this. I think a lot of people were sick with the banking and they started getting into cryptocurrency, but it was very much in a reason that, you know, uh, you know, we're going to get into crypto and we're not going to disclose anything. And um, we're, we're going to, you know, stay behind the rafters and we're going to do shady business and we're just going to make a bunch of money. And this is not that space anymore. 
um, and we can't, we got to expect more. And I, I think that it's a lot of the, uh, the traditional business environment has customer protection laws. They have advertising laws. They have unfair advertising laws for people that are not letting customers know about the risks involved. And so, you know, with fiduciary duty, we want to make sure that the projects are not going and doing risky things with funds, with, with people's funds or investments or their NFTs or, or, uh, or, or any of their assets. So that, uh, you know, especially unbeknownst to those people, uh, but um, yeah, it just, it creates more risk. And I think this was definitely a necessary number 11. And to speak to it further, like to, to move away from banks, banks have insurance with insurance bodies as well as government backing in a lot of, the, in a lot of countries. We're seeing centralized exchanges doing this now. So people are moving away from the traditional finance system into the crypto system. And they're making mistakes worse than trusting your money in a bank, right? So FTX is probably the thought on it, on the front of everyone's mind. That they they pretty much disobeyed Eleven as much as you could potentially disobey it. Like they they yeah they really did take advantage of the public and and they did it behind a lie. So it's um it's a it's a very important one, number eleven. Uh, Duncan, you want to start us off on the first paragraph here? Yeah, <clears throat> sounds good. Um, so, benefits of block membership. Uh, by voluntarily meeting the standards of the block and applying to the block for membership, those companies will receive the benefit of the community knowledge of a larger team of specialists whom each have unique experience and background skills. In essence, block is a team of teams through which water, uh, through with water, all boats will rise. Rather than competing for scraps, together we will build a society of value through shared resources. The block will coordinate and assist members to advance their business legitimacy, and together we will face the changing regulatory environment as a united front. And this is something that I find being an, a huge, huge benefit of joining block. Uh, and we've seen it in the time that we've all been working behind the scenes to to, to build the framework for block. We've already benefited uh, from, from uh, being that little bit closer together, having gone through the audits and having that level of trust. And there may have been some uh, kind of collaborations uh, and some working that may not even have been evident to people in the public, but there's been a lot that's been happening behind the scenes. And I can only see that growing as the network of block members uh, increases and it just breaks down that initial barrier of do I trust this project enough uh, to do business with them collaborate with them or whatever there's still going to be a level of scrutiny and a responsibility on each project to still do their due diligence on that project they're about to collaborate with but it is a huge huge uh, vote of confidence in any project that you may be considering um, you know, partnering with, collaborating with, or, or, or doing something with. Right. And on that as well, I'd just like to throw in that um, for a meme project like Soge, the access to an entire ecosystem of skilled individuals that are typically found backing utility based projects or what one would consider a lot more serious of a project. Um, Zoge has had access to things like that, uh, tools and utilities, most of the time one would assume to be out of our pay grade, which it, this is fantastic access to reach and um, the, the benefits for joining Block being within Block, the knowledge and the peers that you get to surround yourself with are, are probably the main benefits that I find in it because it's just it's so good like the, the best practices and the people I get to talk to the opportunities for classes or connections that I otherwise wouldn't have it's it's really really important like lawyers and accountants and things like that cool uh, who wants to uh, take the last two paragraphs. Patrick, you want to, or I guess three. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll hit it. Okay. Well, maybe not all three. So okay. I'll grab the last one. So the block will not be a pay to participate organization. 
Um, so I will kind of segue here before I continue from that part. There are other organizations out there that claim to provide legitimacy to blockchain products and to uh, other cryptocurrency projects. Most of those organizations do no more than charge that project for basically a stamp of approval, which is disheartening and it's not worth anything because all they've had to do is pay for it. And it, it really disincentivizes those groups from turning anybody down. Uh, and in our time, just in the, the 10 months we've been forming this, we've already turned down probably 40% of applicants because they didn't meet the standard. Uh, so going from there, our focus is quality, which in turn creates value. As an organization, we will pool both our talent and capabilities. We will create an assistance network through which we will aid in promoting members to the next level of growth. The block is a forum for projects to raise issues, challenges, or requests amongst their peer developers and for project leaders to assist others for the betterment of their community. So clearly everybody in, in this group has uh, already been working together and there's already been benefits that everyone has seen uh, for those out there that are reapers and, and no reaper. Uh, you, you might note that all almost all of these projects are hard slotted. Uh, it's not because they are, um, you know, just good friends. It's because they're projects that I, I have faith in because they've met a higher standard. Um, and with that, they've also you know, become part of Ascension and uh, they basically get all of the benefits of the entire Reaper ecosystem uh, by being a member of Block. So it's it's not that they're a member of Block because they were part of Reaper first, they're a part of Reaper because they're a member of Block. Uh, cool. so, uh, last paragraph, members will have access to the cumulative knowledge and contacts of the group i.e. we maintain internal database listing best practices, we list exchange fees, uh, contacts from those exchanges, uh, bolos or people to be on the lookout for, influencer fees, uh, who the allies in the space are and who bad actors in the space are. Uh, this is an invaluable resource for new companies entering the space as it assists them in streamlining growth while avoiding pitfalls. We also include a beginner's guide and mentorship for those looking to launch a new project, uh, given that are, they are in concurrence with the consumer rights established by the block. And I'll actually take a second to segue from that to uh, Bump Treasury and Treasury Academy, who has a, a great system in the works for those new projects that are pre-launch or looking to That's launch. That's Venture, Venture. Sorry, Venture. Uh, he's got so many, it's hard to keep track. <laughs> Academy's uh, awesome as well. <laughs> Look into that too. Academy is also awesome, yeah. Uh, so Venture, and basically Venture helps a project stand up and stand up in accordance with block values and the constitution as they go. And then they are in a pipeline to reach into the block and become a full member. And with that, they're in a pipeline to become a, a hard slotted token and part of Ascension. And basically that means by being a part of this whole uh, extended ecosystem with the block and treasury and all of these projects, you are choosing a, a roadmap to success apart from your regular project. And to speak to that last paragraph a little bit more, like I've made mistakes with Schmeckles and so has my team. And I'm sure most of the other members up here have made mistakes in their project through through this the one year or however long it's been since you've been launched. Um, we're offering those those tips to block members. And, and we speak about these types of things in our meetings all the time is we will stumble from time to time, but it's it's more so about how, how we define ourselves after those mistakes. Um, letting the public know that, that we have made these mistakes um, and, and supporting new projects coming into this space, how to avoid those, those mistakes that we did make. Cool. Right. And on that note, I would just say that we, I usually, and most of us do, um, sum it up as something as simple as best practices, but that, that couple, couple words does not sum up just how many 
thousands of possible potential mistakes or errors or tactical missteps a project could take, there are a tremendous amount of rug, uh, rug options and pitfalls. As a project developer, we don't believe um, in block that most projects who launch um, actually have a bad intent, though the majority of projects that do launch end up poorly or fail. And there's a reason, and that reason isn't just because people inherently are bad, it's that people inherently don't have the necessary skills, and that's where Block comes in. Yeah, I'd just like to add that I think that there's a tremendous uh, knowledge resource here that you gain by being part of the block. And it's a commodity uh, similar to that, that you know that the other people that are here meet a certain level of, level of qualification. And when you make it through the process, you know exactly what it is and what they're not only providing to their communities in quality, but what they uh, have to be able to provide to each other. And there's already connections that uh, I've made in this very short time with members of the block here that uh, have benefited not only myself, but my community and, and where I can give back, I can in any way possible. And so it doesn't need to just be a take, it can be a collaborative approach. And uh, there's definitely a lot of opportunity here to do that with a, a lot of projects that represent different things in different ways, right? We've got uh, projects that are doing meme tokens and different different types of art and games and um, publishing and uh, as you know you got your reaping and geez all all kinds of stuff and I think there'll be a lot more to come in the future. It's going to be exciting to see. Yeah, I personally can't wait for the gaming space to come on board. I feel like that's going to be a very interesting. Uh, um, love to see gaming projects uh, join the block personally <laughs> would love to be able to um, see how they can help the, the space develop as well as well as more utility and of course everything else but i'm sorry i'm a gamer as well just have to say it um are we at the last paragraph is that me we uh we hit the last one i believe oh we did okay cool oh, um, no. did we read it i don't think so okay uh, yeah no, no. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> So as a, as a member of the block, you will have the opportunity to present issues of governance for the whole of blockchain. And if consensus is found amongst the members, an official position may be published to support the position and raise public awareness for the community. The block will maintain public presence similar to a regulatory authority. The block aims to be uh, the public standard of self-governance and credibility for the blockchain. <sighs> Sorry. Right. And it, it, coming into this, is a, it's obviously a, a very tall order, but um, we've looked at many, many different nations' laws currently establish legal expectations, both minimums and maximums, and compared them across many, many ju different jurisdictions. And in every case that we've looked into, we are above those expectations. Our minimum is either at, at their maximum or we are in areas that they haven't even begun to think about yet. And this all lends uh, to our ability later on as a larger organization to help guide the hands that need information to uh, draft legislation. Yep. Um, and this is something that as we grow and as we gain more people and, and leaders in this space and, uh, you know, or, you know, fantastic individuals as the, as the opportunity is the uh, the ability and for us to drive forward some of these things and help educate because the block is again an educational nonprofit uh, to help educate you know people like lawmakers uh, you know other people that are trying to start you know projects or that are new projects where you know because it is it takes ninety days to be uh, block approved uh, by the way so I think that will help answer someone's question that was being asked. I uh, tried to sneak one in there for you. Hope hope that helped. Um, but also, want we want to uh, this. These are all di our different positions. This is us signing the constitution. But I also want to make sure that we we call out some significant individuals that helped to to build this. And I really just want to take a second, and all of us do. If you if y'all have some words that you want to say, but I just want to make sure we say thank you uh, to Matthew Maciel, uh, Christopher Blevins, Amy Hulse, and Brandon Lee for their contributions to the block. Because while uh, you know they're not necessarily here anymore, uh, they all made uh, 
excellent efforts and, and helped us to, to really uh, added to the conversation and the, and the, and the depth of uh, the, the soup, if you will, of what block now is. So um, you have anything else to say or, or call well, it's out? just, it's just a testament to, to what we have been building and for how long we have been building that we've, some people have gone through their lifetime of, of their membership or, or part of being in block already. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's been that long. Um, and I, I just, I just want to, congratulate those who have remained because it has been tough and i'm sure there's been times when all of us have just been like i've got so many other things that i could be paid for with this time <laughs> but i'm dedicating my time to this organization for free you know so um i'm i'm just so proud of what we have created and i'm so proud of, of being up here alongside all of you gentlemen um we need to get some women up here eventually and then it's sad to have amy had had left us but so this is a call out oh, to the women out there get get over here <laughs> uh, but yeah it's been it's been a long slog and i'm just so proud of us for, for getting to this point and and definitely a big thanks to all those people who have helped along the way who are no longer with with us um due to moving on yeah yep. yeah and on that i would like to say a special thank you to matthew and Maciel for all of the critical thinking Chris Blevins, can you put that back up? Oh, yep, sir. sorry. Uh, Chris Blevins for excellent in 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 the know technical know how and knowledge um, from his position at Microsoft. Amy for her ethical understandings and her position at Microsoft as well. And Brandon Lee for all of the collaboration cooperation with security auditing the Zoge project and assisting the community in the Zoge project as well. And I, I just like to add to that, that there are also some that weren't even on this list that assisted us along the way to include some influencers, some, some of the um, well-known attorneys out there in the XRP ledger and um, some of the projects, even the projects that didn't make it through um, to block standards really helped us to grow along the way by, by guiding uh, the end outcome. So I appreciate all of them i appreciate all those who are trying and i hope some of them that didn't make it will will be back um so yeah it, it was definitely a collaborative effort and i do want to second what james said about um it, inviting diversity in the block we very much want um absolute uh, participation from every group we can have participation from so uh, nobody is excluded uh, and we, we invite anybody with any interest to, to come and be a part of it. Welcome, Fred, by the way. Uh, this is Fred Rispoli. Uh, and for those of you who are not aware of him, uh, he's awesome. And he is our uh, our legal counsel and an, um, another uh, director on the board. So, oh, Sorry I'm late, everyone. But it is nice to see so many good-looking faces out there on the stream. Right. He's looking at um, James from Schmeckles. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, right back at you, Fred. <laughs> All right. Well, Fred, we just uh, we've been taking some early questions. We just went over the Constitution. We're about to go into more questions. So if there's anything about the legal side of things, you know, it's really great to have you here. And uh, or, or just in general, if you have questions, uh, you know, for for Fred and so forth. But. but and actually, I'd love to give Fred a, a chance to speak to what this organization is and what his role in it is and uh, why the block is important enough for him to spend his, uh, you know, his very valuable time with us uh, without charging us lawyer fees for it. Um, so thank you for that. But uh, uh, yeah, just if you have anything to share. Yeah, well, you know, I know that uh, we've all got some videos that are coming out that get kind of at a little bit more of what we're each doing and bringing to the table for Block and what Block is. And, you know, I talk about it in my video with JT. He's a great interviewer. Uh, but basically, you know, Block isn't the only crypto association, project-based association out there. So what are we doing to be better or standing out or kind of moving the pro the the goals of what this space is supposed to become more than those other ones and that's where the block is going to excel and i think has excelled already with the stringent standards that you know everybody has to meet to get in here it's just very refreshing because we've got those standards that are public they're available 
they're are there for anyone to see. And a lot of those associations, the other ones don't have that. And, you know, you're going to see us down the road being more involved in a lot of issues that, that are coming up, you know, all over the place, you know, in any jurisdiction to really fight for the industry and especially, you know, the, the members that are a part of the group. Yep. We are looking into, you know, the, of course, the block general assembly meetings that we have every so often. We've the idea has been thrown around for round, round tables where the community can come in and join in the conversation, depending. Uh, we're looking at exactly how we might host those and uh, be a little bit different for the community. Um, but, yeah, uh, thank you again so much, Fred, for joining us. Does everyone have anything else to say real quick? Or do you all mind us jumping back? Because we've got like 23 questions waiting, by the way. Question. <laughs> question. Yeah, let's so, get going. All right. So, well, let's pop in here. Uh, this question is from Locked, I believe. Uh, it's one of one. Just a suggestion. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible. I support your oversight roles, uh, but it is limited to who chooses to be a part of Block. Uh, but what if uh, ZUM itself together with, and this is the second part, uh, the XRPL formally uses Block as the gatekeepers for new projects? So if, uh, I'll field that one. So if XUM Wallet or uh, XRPL.services, uh, whoever you want to classify them as, decide to come and approach us for potentially building out a uh, a gateway for onboarding. I, I wouldn't necessarily want us to be the gatekeepers. Uh, however, we are a standards organization, so we we would probably be more than happy to uh, help them construct from our experience and with our uh, constitution and our bylaws, what a good standard would be for onboarding uh, through their services. So I'll jump into that as well and and I, I just want to say there's a diverse way that tokens can be used and not all of them are projects that are going to go public and that need to be governed by a board like the block or a regulatory body like the block um, an example may be a sports team who want to have a a cryptocurrency token which is their a token of them being part of the team so it's just i've got a token in my zum wallet which means i'm part of team a um, that there's no need for the block to look into a group like that. There's no need for that group to be part of block. There's no need for Zum to, to limit them, their ability to create a token and be part of the XRPL. So um, I think it would be very difficult to, to set the standard of block onto everybody and to paint everybody with the same brush because there is a very diverse use of tokens. And, and yeah, so, but for the bigger projects, I would, yeah, it would be fantastic if we could work with Zum and, and, and help them enforce some of this stuff. Right. And on that, I'd just say that I'm I'm pretty sure that you can um, go through token verifications through Zum prior to being a three month old or older project. So um, we don't uh, we don't have exactly the same expectations. Ours are, are pretty hard. And if if we were to work with them, it would be we're not going to lighten our expectations. Our expectations only get harder in most cases. So as, lo as long as it was uh, everybody benefiting as far as um, the consumer having the most protection or oversight help, then we, we could possibly be on board. You're on mute, JT. What do we got next for question? Here? Oh, well, <laughs> so if there was nothing else, I guess I'll move on. So sorry. Um, nine to five freedom. Yeah, nine to five. Um, so have you guys tried to estimate the time and cost for a project to get and stay within compliance of the bylaws and rules? I'm sure it could vary, but an estimate could help. Uh, project C ROI. And so I believe he's talking about like the cycle time, the time from someone, you know, starting the process to the end and then I guess, and then staying compliant. So um, I would love to jump onto this before anybody does, because I'm going to say something very controversial. Okay. And that is that a project should not be starting up with the sole focus on return of investment when they're thinking about regulations and doing the right thing by the ecosystem. And this is nothing against the question nine to five. I just believe personally that if you are a serious contender in this space and you want to take this space seriously, 
that it, it doesn't matter how much it costs. If you want to do the right thing, there is no price on that. You just have to do the right thing. Um, and that should be an expectation of the community. People should not be putting their monies in places where there is no standard met. Um, but this is this is all going to be an education process. And I think the block is, is a, a, a very good step in, in helping people understand what this is. Um, but like I said, this is potentially a little bit controversial. So Patrick, you can definitely jump in. Uh, no, I, so I agree totally with what James said. Uh, so I will feel a little bit on the cost side that uh, if you're going to become a registered company, generally, you can do so for less than 1000 US dollars in the US. Uh, of course, that's going to vary with different uh, countries and nations. And then time wise, the, the commitment is probably three to six months to to get everything in line. Uh, however, as far as ROI or return on investment, I would say that by following the, the block guidelines, you are going to be more compliant than anyone else of your peers in this space. Whereas not being compliant, the what's the ROI on a regulator shutting you down just like that, right? So um, having the best protection you can for your business by being the most compliant is priceless, whereas Without it, you're just walking a very high risk index. Trans right. I'd like to add that a lot of it is transparency and transparency defeats corruption. Um, and also investors, especially in times where uh, people where the, the people don't want to take on a lot of risk, right? When they're a little bit more tight on the purse strings, um, then by providing them with this extra transparency, you're reducing the investment risk for them. And uh, they're, they're probably more likely to want to uh, purchase a, a commodity or an investment with, with your project. I'll, uh, I'll just add real quick. Uh, again, right now, the block is a, it, I was about to say right now, I don't, we have any plans to go anything different. The, the block is a volunteer organization, so there's no cost for anyone to come in. We don't charge people to do our audit. We don't charge people for our onboarding process. This is all purely our volunteer time to be able to make sure that this organization, and again, if you're going to be a block member, we, we hope that you will help uh, continue this and uh, you know add to the resources so that we can provide even more to the community in terms of... Uh, what, what we can, you know, with our time, but so there is no cost in terms of there and it's all 100% ROI <laughs> by applying to block. I just want to throw that out there real quick. So uh, we can move on to the next one. If there's nothing else, I'm assuming I'm not muted this time, right? Okay, You're good, JT. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you would have kept this all quiet. I just want to quickly say that's um monkey around uh, Classy's neck, and that yep. is a living dog that's just asleep. So don't freak out. Yes. Every block <laughs> meeting, monkey joins us. Um, next question is from, I believe, Tiara. Uh, what if the cops on the beat won't go after the bad actors, but instead target the legitimate projects in the space, kind of like what we're seeing now? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question and a, a fair question, right? So part of what we're doing with the block is we're also providing um, people just like Fred and John Deaton and, um, you know, the, the attorneys out there who are looking for a, a structure to find what a good regulatory environment might look like for projects. We're giving them a point of reference. Uh, from which they can go and approach uh, legal issues to defend the good clients and potentially show why a bad client would would fail this standard. Um, so as far as whether or not the, the cops on the block go after the bad actors, we stand a much better chance of getting them to go after the bad actors if we provide them the most information possible. So when we do an audit and we, we verify their ID and we verify the companies that they're a part of, we're able to basically have the maximum amount of potential accountability for that project, as opposed to, um, you know, if, if the cops have to do all the work, they're probably not going to do it themselves and they don't necessarily understand it. And it's also a international uh, 
problem. So we're providing them a, a point of contact through which they may be able to actually solve a case as opposed to chase their tail. Gotcha. And I would uh, add to that, uh, Tiara, and I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, that I like how, you know, at first your question, what if, and I was like, there's no what if, they're definitely not going <laughs> after the bad actors. But then, as you mentioned <clears throat> at the very beginning, kind of like what we're seeing now is exactly is, is exactly the right way to think about it. And that's the the point of the block and any standard setting organization is, you know, we want to get to a point where our standards are so high and good and industry specific that you can look at a, a project and say, you know, would this person, whether they tried to become a member or not, would they meet the standards of the block? And, and if they wouldn't, and if they don't have their own information out there, you know, that would be the kind of information we look at, then the individual can say, all right, this could, I'm a little worried about, about this project. And the second option, and it's an option that, you know, the block hopes to, to do going down the road is kind of similar to uh, a lawsuit my uh, crypto firm HODL Law were doing against the SEC with Ethereum. It's that if nobody's going to tell us the answer or no one's going to do anything else, if the, if the cops on the beat won't go after the bad actors, then we'll just do it ourselves. And, you know, it might work, it, it might not, but we're not going to sit back and not try. And so that's something that, you know, I'm really excited on the legal side to be a part of here on, on the block. You You're muted again, JT. <laughs> <laughs> trying so hard just not to cough in everyone's ear. But yeah, um, I was going to say, Duncan, I know you've got a little bit of a lag. Uh, is there anything you wanted to jump in on? Uh, nothing that had already been said, so all good. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure. I know that like you're getting a little bit of a delay, so uh, just, just feel free to jump in at any point. <laughs> um, Let's uh, next time, or sorry, next question we have here is, let me mark off Tiara. Got from Dale. Uh, Patrick said Block is preparing to meet the request of oversight lawmakers uh, because all these Block members are from different countries. How does that protect Block? So it's not necessarily that it protects block it that it's that it empowers those lawmakers and empowers the good actors out there in the cryptocurrency community. So essentially what we've done with Ripple and the amicus briefing uh, through Reaper and on, you know, kind of on behalf of the entirety of the XRPL, um, that's what the block can do in different legal cases out there is we can submit an amicus position in which we give a a position or opinion based on our own standards of did this company do the right thing by their consumer or did they violate what would be otherwise a a best practice Definitely. And ideally, we'll be able to speak to these regulatory bodies from government side and help them define what their regulations are to help protect the community. I think the block doesn't need protection. I think it stands on its own, its own merit, its own four legs. It's um, we've, we've built this to be as stringent as possible. It's why it's taken so long to launch. Um, it's more about how do we protect the ecosystem and the communities? That's, that's, that's really the question. And I believe it is by working with these government bodies, if, if possible, if they will listen. It's, um, I think we're all seeing that that's going to be a very difficult task. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to try. <laughs> so uh, let me hide that one. We'll move on. Next one is by uh, Cam Cameron. Hi, guys. Big fan of all your projects. Was wondering if Ripple, Ripple NZZ uh, is part of the block or is he going to be? He does a great job for the whole XRPL. Love all the work he does. Uh, so Ripple in NZ, if anyone doesn't know, that's the elephant butt on, on Twitter. <laughs> He's um, He is a bit of a cop on the beat for the XRPL and he does a fantastic job on so many different projects. Um, I don't think we've approached him and I don't see any reason why if he's interested that, that, that he wouldn't be able to join block. 
Um, I know he doesn't have a project, so he might sit as an, an advisor to Block. Um, but yeah, he, he definitely does some great work. Yeah, and on that note, um, sorry, Josh. Um, no on that note, um, I'd just like to say, I don't see any problem if he were to be interested to come in. Um, at the same time, I do see him facilitating a much needed um, other role, which is he he's a very strong character, strong willed, um, capable of defending himself and fighting. He's capable of engaging what he believes uh, through his evidence to be potential rugs. That's not really what Block does. We don't take an offensive attack on anything. We're here as something to support those who uh, want to learn, want to do better, uh, are willing to uh, partake in best practices and things like that. So he does uh, serve the community, in my opinion, but in a completely different way. Yeah, he's on the reactive side of things, right? So he comes in after things go to heck is usually when he comes in. What we're trying to do is come in at the proactive side. Yep. I, will, I will speak to his defense on that. Sometimes he's very proactive um, and he finds these rugs before they even occur based on previous history. So he, he definitely think, isn't yeah, only reactive. But um, yeah, it, like, I think it's a good point that you guys are making that he it, probably serves a better service not being in block in a sense, right? Like, And yeah. I do agree with everything that's been said, but I'd also point out that even though he, he serves that purpose and he sometimes sees those rugs before they happen, he has yet to prevent any rugs, which it's good that someone is able to expose them. Uh, but if I disagree, Patrick, he has, he definitely I, has, he, he's done it. Like I just said, on the basis of a rug has occurred already. And he's tracked these wallets of these individuals who've created new tokens and he's literally nipped them in the bud before they even, launched like before they even went public he was like okay. have a look at this this is what they've done in the past and yeah he's 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 really cool like that and he, and he stays with his finger on the pulse but uh, yeah it's um it's a great question cam good on you mate this is yep. a good conversation yeah. as a security officer um and even before joining the block i already had uh, a, a line, uh, an open line of communication with Ripplet. So that is not, uh, you know, I, I'm sure if I needed to reach out with with him, then it should not be an issue. Yep. To, just, yeah. Oh, sorry. Anything else, Josh? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's it. Okay. I just wanted, to, I wanted to share this picture. We've been looking for metaphors of like, as we've tried to figure out what the block is and, and what it's going to be, I've come up with two that I just wanted to share with the community real quick. So that was a good question to, to do it on. The block is a light in the space. Now people are going to, good actors are going to come towards the light and uh, they're going to be a part of block. We're going to see projects that are going to uh, adhere uh, that may not be, uh, that may not get brought, projects that do not get block approval may still aspire to all the different standards and code of conduct and everything else, but they may not be a, a block approved project because of uh, a number of different reasons. And there actually is, uh, we will get into a bit of the process. I did see someone's question about a, uh, the process for onboarding. We can definitely cover that. Uh, but at the end, there is a vote, and it is up to uh, the board And a, a, in terms of a final vote. Now, anyone that has not, uh, and we'll get, again, we'll get into this a little bit later, but the anyone that has undergone a vote, usually if they get through all the rest of the process, it's usually no problem uh, in terms of the vote. But that vote is a, a, a last chance to understand, like, is there anything wrong here? Um, so for projects, the second uh analogy that i've come up with is the uh that in the landscape of the blockchain space the block stands as an oasis now everyone wants to come in everyone wants water everyone wants to feel safe and you know all the animals will gather right uh but it is also you know there's a fortress around this oasis and it takes a lot to get in and you gotta abide by the rules or you, you will not be there uh afterwards so um, I, I feel like those are two metaphors that I've tried to seek. I'm always seeking for others, uh, but I just wanted to take a, a quick second to share those. Um, yeah, and actually that's a perfect time for me to talk a little bit about our logo. So everyone that uh, has known me for a minute knows that I'm very much into esoterics. And uh, as I think JT puts it very well with us being the lighthouse of the, of the blockchain, but uh, also, what we have here is the scales of uh, not necessarily justice, but these are actually the scales of 
the afterlife of life and death, which is a little bit of a nod to the Reaper. And in, in Egyptian lore, uh, Thoth, the god of knowledge, and Mot, the uh, would take you to Osiris and they'd pull out your heart and uh, they'd put your heart on a scale and Mott would put a feather on the other end and they would measure your heart to see if your heart was lighter than a feather. And so that is the symbolism here is we are pulling out our hearts. We are putting them on display as projects. We are making ourselves vulnerable and we are determining whether other projects are innocent and transparent enough uh, that they are indeed a heart lighter than a feather, or if uh, there are things that would weigh their hearts down and they are not necessarily um, true to uh, continue into what would be considered, you know, the, the good afterlife that you would see in ancient times. So that is the symbology here. Thanks for that, Patrick. Anyone else before we uh, move on to the next question? I'm not muted. Okay, good. There's just silence. All right. I'll move on to the next one and we'll get back to the other view here. How can holders of uh, block member projects best help block? I think we touched on this earlier. Right now, it's awareness. It's um, it's other tokens that you hold, like Patrick said, asking those developers and project leads if if they are interested in block or if they would uh, comply to the block standard. Um, but yeah, just ensuring that you're liking us on social media, um, sharing posts, uh, asking questions, being part of events like this. This is very valuable so thank you for being here crypto gold bot and hopefully you're not an actual bot <laughs> but thank you for uh being here and and this is this is exactly what we're, we, we're requesting people to do is to be present and be with us yep just want to throw in there real quick other content creators the people that you follow on youtube you know part of that awareness is uh other people that are in the space need to hear about block and they need to it will be great if other content creators, you know, we're, we're asking other, you know, projects, you know, Hey, you know, have, are you block certified? Have you heard of block? You know, all those <clears throat> great questions. So just want to throw that out there again. Right. And I just wanted to say real quick, um, as much as I appreciate all the support from the community and everything, I want you guys to know that, um, whether you guys are helping to promote block or doing anything to support us, the, the mission and intent of Block is to support you, you as, as people in the space. We're, we're not creating this to um, request your help on anything. Although your help is greatly appreciated, we're just creating infrastructure so that you're better off in the long run. All right. We'll move on here. Um, next one is from... Toastman Tech, how can we as retail digital asset holders contribute to Block? Uh, I will say that we at different times might be looking for volunteers to help out with different things. We are, again, a volunteer organization. Uh, while the volunteers may not be, you know, Block approved, they are volunteers and can can help with different things to Block. So I'll just throw that out there real quick. Right. And on that, I'll, I'll just throw in that any one of you who feels like writing a, a page or two article on something, you can do that, submit it to us. We can proof it, we can publish it if, if we find that to be in agreement with us. So um, we can broadcast for you, of course, with your credits. And if we agree with your stances on things, then uh, you, you, know, you get a bit of a platform there and we also get content to push. So it's a good thing. Yeah, and I'd also add that maybe there's a lot of ways you can help that we're not even aware of. So just reach out. I mean, that's the whole point of the of the um, project that we're trying to do here is that, you know, we, it's not like just because you're a member, uh, that means only the members know everything there is to know. So if you got a great idea, we'd love all types of contributions. Just make sure if you go to the contact form uh, for a general inquiry, that's where you can... Uh, if you have anything you want to contribute, we'd be happy for your inquiry. So, oops. All right. Um, 
keep clicking on the wrong thing here. All right, Steve, would you would all projects that go up for a vote for venture with Treasury have to be a member of the block? Uh, Duncan, great question for yourself. Well, um, thank you very much, Steve, for the great time on uh, the venture platform that uh, is in we are launching actually going uh, this coming Tuesday. Um, you've kind of got parts of it right, but sort of the wrong way around. The way Venture is designed to slot in is in the early stages of a project. So it's a project that hasn't launched. It might be an established business coming to the blockchain, coming from another blockchain over to the XRPL, because with Treasury's Venture, it is XRPL specific as opposed to block, which is blockchain agnostic. Uh, this would be the, for those young uh, and not yet established projects, they would, they could, they don't have to, come through venture first and do the venture voting rounds, benefit from the mentorship that us as a project, uh, the spotlight on the funding and uh, the rewards uh, package of products and services. And only really when a project has reached 90 days in the space, so 90 days of trading, 90 days of offering as a, as a project, are you then eligible to actually join Block? So you have a choice. You could do nothing, run your project for the first 90 days and bang on 90 days or 91st day, you can apply for Block. Or you could choose to utilize the venture platform specifically designed for those younger projects gotcha well you're breaking up just a little there but uh i think we got most of it please if you let us know if you got that question answered or if there's any other follow-ups uh towards the end there but thank right. you and on that note what he's what he's saying there is uh if anybody didn't quite catch that is venture isn't required but because you know you have to be in the space for 90 days you don't have access to block and best practices in a lot of cases projects and people can reach out to us for help but they can't apply to join block so venture is available and sort of like a prelude to block it would assist you in a lot of knowledge and best practices and uh, prevent you from making some of the common mistakes but it's not required Yes. And I'll also add just for Duncan, because I know it's probably itching him right now that this is just for the XRPL uh, for for venture specifically. So it doesn't support other uh, other blockchains yet that I'm aware of. Uh, but you can correct me on that, Duncan, if I'm wrong. <laughs> and I just want to add that we encourage all new projects launching to go out and uh, be a part of venture. But uh, even if you do or don't, our website does have our constitution, our bylaws, our values, our uh, code of conduct all published. So we encourage any project out there that's looking for a framework to go and review those and um, you know align yourself with those. Yep, absolutely. Um, I believe, is this the next one? Nope, that is Steve again. I uh, have to be a member of blog. Let me get rid of that one. And we'll go to, again, Crypto Goldbot, who asks, uh, will you disclose projects that are rejected and why? So we do not disclose them. Uh, the reason being is because we are not there to harm those projects and we want them to come back. We also don't want to discourage them from applying to the block. If we were disclosing projects that uh, failed to meet the standards that would become kind of dramatic and it would look as if we were attempting to to hurt that project and that is not our intention whatsoever and i think that's that's really what patrick said is is we're here to try and lift up the standard so even if a project fails we are giving them the tools they need to bring their standard up so we don't want to just say you're rejected forever we're going to say you are very welcome back but you need to do xyz first um, so that is another way that we can help promote this, this standard in, in the ecosystem. Yep. Now there is a 90 day waiting period for projects to reapply. Uh, so, uh, it, we do give that time so that, you know, there's no rush, you know, the space is ever developing something may even change for a project, uh, during that time, you never know. Uh, but we do need to get to other, 
like that just keeps us from having to from someone coming back to us and not really taking care of what they need to and gives them the time to take care of it at the same time. So, um, do, 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 let me, there it oh, is guys. Did it. I did it. <laughs> That's the first one. I know. I <laughs> I tried so hard. If you guys don't know, uh, JT used to just say do 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 a lot, and he is like never says it anymore. Very impressive, JT. <laughs> All these guys give me a hard time, but yes, I'll, uh, I'm working on it. Um, so from Brandon, uh, planned, planned in, planned in. I think I got that right. Um, will there will the reasons a project fails to meet the requirements uh, be made public? And I think we just answered that, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip over that. If you have any more specific questions, uh, please put them in the, please re-ask them, and I'll get to them. Um, let me go back to Dale here. Uh, has Hugo from Flare Network uh, been approached uh, to become block compliant? And I, I will just say real quick, I don't think any of us have reached out because we have not launched yet. A lot of people, even though we have not launched, uh, have approached us, and uh, we have we've done as many as we can while trying to create, you know, put the wheels on the car as it's driving, so to speak. But uh, I don't think um, does, have any of y'all reached out to other projects and, and, and invited them. So I, I have talked to Hugo, but not specifically about the block. Um, I think he at this time still needs to focus on launching flare. And I don't mean that in jest. I, I just mean that, uh, you know, he's got quite a, a lot on his plate. So I would probably wait till after he has uh, officially launched Flare and then been out for 90 days um, before we would approach him. So some of us have reached out to other projects. Um, I'm just going to quickly zoom past Patrick's dig. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I agree with you, Patrick, by the way. I'll just say that for the record. But um, there are some other projects which are already lined up for onboarding. Um, so I don't know if we should publicly talk about them or not. I'm not so sure. But there no, are no, no, some no. very good projects that are, that are just in, in the bays right now. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, Josh, if that was a question or if you're just trying to get the camera to focus. <laughs> oh, my camera camera to focus. My camera is wigging. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going all fuzzy here. I'm like Bigfoot. Okay. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm clear. Now, now it's over to Patrick. Oh, or, sorry, to, to Duncan. That's it's clearing up though. Um, all right. Next question is from Rosemary. Can you foresee a day when a, or if a project doesn't pass approval for block membership that it won't get any traction at all? Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in for a second. Guys, that's, that's not what we would want. I mean, honestly, um, there's a lot of different projects that we haven't been able to fathom that could come to the space. Uh, a good case on that would be the Reaper project itself. When it came into the space, even people like, um, you know, David Schwartz were saying a project should never exist and not be black hole. So uh, fundamentally, we're just looking at we don't know every situation and we're not security guards or anything. We're just trying to help projects prevent um, major mistakes themselves and to have access to resources they wouldn't have and a, a bit more consumer um, protection and security along, all along those lines but not trying to uh, destroy anybody else's hard work or effort good projects will always make it whether they talk to block or not because they won't give up they'll work hard they'll create and they'll build and anybody can do that so i don't want anybody to think that block is here trying to take over anything that i mean we have um, almost a year of debate over all of these topics, so it's taught it's taught us a lot on perspective. Yep. I, think I would like. To yeah, add I would add. add um, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Josh. Uh, I was just going to say it lowers risk, right? A block membership lowers risk. So there's, you know, you've got people that are speculators, you got people that are investors, you got different types of people. Of course, a blockchain uh, technology can be used for anything from flyers and receipts pamphlets to deeds titles uh, etc right so um if uh, someone is in the block you know that once you know once the word gets out there more that there's a, a certain amount like there's a bar there and uh so it it, uh, it shows that they've gone through a certain amount of work and due diligence and that's less risk 
Oh, you said exactly what I was about to say. Good job. I, I would add, thinking about it this way, Rosemary, which uh, you, you did at the end of your question, any traction at all. And the point there being, you know, we do hope as the block moves forward and, and everybody can see how beneficial it is that, you know, they do think it's very important to get that seal of meeting the auditing standards, meeting the onboarding standards, the project standards, and that is a, a significant deal, but it's not going to kill any project that, that doesn't have it. And, you know, before I really started doing a lot of crypto legal work, I would do a lot of medical malpractice work and, and there's standard setting organizations there, there's standard setting organizations in every area of, of industry. And so, you know, some hospitals, there are, there are gold standard uh, accreditation organizations and, you know, all the hospitals want to get that gold standard, but there are a lot of hospitals that are still good and are fine. And they either don't want to, I mean, we don't charge anybody. It's, it, this is not a money-making scheme at block, but some of those other organizations are. And so you've got some good hospitals that don't want to be, uh, charge that much or they can't go through that process for whatever reason, but are still good. So, you know, we, we do hope it means something and is meaningful that, you know, somebody might say, oh, I, I wonder if they, whether they're a member or not, I wonder if they would meet the block standards. Um, but, you know, we don't want to ever say that blocks a be all end all, you know, absolutely. Yeah, I will say that again, it takes 90 days before anyone can even apply to block. So they should have um, a, you know, some time in the field already. Now, if we become such a, a, a behemoth that and we've done a good job, you know, and we've if if yeah, if we actually get to that point to where we're in a scenario where if someone doesn't get block approval after third and that raises some eyebrows, I think we've done something good there, hopefully uh, in that space. So um but yeah just my my thoughts anyone else on this before we move on nope i'm seeing shaking heads all right and rolling eyes from james all right so we'll move I'm on not, to i'm not rolling my eyes Sorry, <laughs> I'm, just giving it time. I'm going back between the chat chats and i'm oh, just really okay. enjoying the, the chats it's good gotcha my, that's when i'm laughing at like like spots where i shouldn't be laughing i'm usually <laughs> laughing at someone in the chat okay you're good uh, is, so from Curly Bill, um, is the plan for all Ascension hard slots to be members of Block? Uh, yeah, so I, I take it that question's for me. Uh, so, so for Ascension, um, and and to be clear, Ascension is not a Block product. Ascension is still a Reaper Financial product. But for Reaper Financial, offering basically a basket of tokens that have been highly vetted. Uh, that are worthy of progressing by being purchased and distributed uh, far and wide to holders of Ascension. We want the highest standard possible. So we, we know that those projects that are hard slotted and being purchased and distributed are worth owning. So we, we are going to be uh, adapting that to the block uh, standard and projects that are block uh, approved will have the opportunity to be hard slotted, provided they also have a, a dedicated Reaper wallet that is meant for reaping their own project. So that's that's kind of a, a way for us to improve the quality of the Ascension product. Yep. Awesome. Um, I can't wait to see what other projects show up and, and may, you know, qualify later for that. And, you know, Reaper is just the, and Patrick is one of the first to use the block standards in a, in such a way, um, you know, just as I'll just, you know, whenever I've talked before about how Schmeckles has used Reaper for, you know, and conducting their own vote and doing their own thing, I'm hoping and really anxious to see, you know, will, will exchanges be using the block for, you know, some kind of, you know, early indicator of, of, a, of a project you know how will the space take to us is one of my questions i have and that's no one can answer that here because i guess we're just going to see um i but... can see the river sticks will use the block as a standard oh okay well uh there, there you have some of that but uh we'll see about the rest of the space 
Well, Patrick, thanks. do you want to drop any other bombs? That's insane. <laughs> Can we just take a second to breathe that in? That's insane. So you're saying the River of Sticks is only going to be for, for block uh, compliant uh, projects? So the block compliant projects will be the first projects uh, automatically hosted on the River Sticks. Yes. Wow. There you go. That's insane. That's massive. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Reaper. Awesome. Um, and we'll see whenever that happens. Um, I can't wait for the sticks to, to drop. Um, another question from Dale. Any anticipated time frame for Block to go from chasing projects to being chased by projects? And uh, yeah. Simple, simple answer, I think, to that is launch, right? So now we're launched. I think we're going to see um, an uptake of projects coming. We, we didn't exist prior to today in the public eye, even though a lot of people caught on to what we're doing and, yeah. and there were little breadcrumbs crumbs around. Um, and like we said, there's already people, uh, sorry, I should say, there's already projects in the wings waiting to be onboarded. So it's already happening, Dale. Thank you. For right. And, and to that, Dale, I would say that that already occurred about four months ago, roughly where we, we started having more projects coming around and showing interest in what we were ready to facilitate due to building the actual uh, infrastructure of block. Um, and uh, well, uh, Duncan, you have anything from the onboarding side of things? Do you have a number for us in terms of how many are, are waiting to get through the door? No, I'm all good. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we're apparently not going to share that number at this time, but uh, we do. I know there are uh, at least. I'm going to say it's over five. I'm pretty sure it's over five that we have at least applications for. I think, uh, if I remember correctly. But, um, so I, I want to at least I want to give them like there's already people that are interested, so it's it's a good thing. Um, but uh, Dale, any? Oh, maybe. The only thing I would say is um, that we are going to have to deal with projects on a first come first serve basis. Uh, it's the only fair way for us to be able to create a kind of a queue system with regards to onboarding. Um, and uh, that is not something I think we make clear on the website, but it's something that people would probably is what we're going to do. And it's the, we have to because like you've all said, we've had projects approach us without it being officially launched yet. So we anticipate there being, uh, you know, an expense, exponentially higher uptake uh, now that uh, it's, it's all made official. Yep. And just to speak to onboarding a little bit further. So prior to stepping into the role of ethical officer, I was actually a part of uh, Duncan's team as onboarding. Um, and part of that process really requires response and, and a fast response time from those projects that are onboarding. So that may be um, what causes you to fall back to the end of the queue. So projects that are looking to onboard, we just request that you take this seriously. Um, if there is a request for information or something of, of those lines, a question, anything along those lines, that you do respond as, as fast as possible just because there is a backlog already and we've literally just launched. So. Um, and I, I guess I will say as well is if there is um, a significant amount of uh, need for people to support Duncan is me, I will actually be supporting Duncan in his role, but we are definitely looking for more volunteers. So if, so if you're interested in helping with onboarding, um, please come forward. Yeah. Any projects that want to, uh, that are going to be one of those ones that get in early, by the way, you may be put to put put to, put to work pretty early in terms of uh needing your your assistance and and helping move that forward so um uh josh did you have something i just want to say that the the projects that are here had to go through things just like everybody else is going to so for instance i had to go through the same work and i'm not going to be auditing myself um the audit will be done impartially by uh, most likely Patrick, and I'll be put to the same metrics as anyone else, and I would expect no less. And I don't expect preferential treatment, and I don't think anybody here does. Yep. And uh, there may be some bigger names that are. Hey, I just wanted to give a shout out in the uh, in the chat, and I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, Bude. You know, she's kind of hit the nail on the head with what we're trying to do. Um, she said she works in the hospice industry and they've got an accrediting body that, you know, I'm familiar with, 
you know, because I've interacted with um, hospice providers and cases before. And she mentioned, hey, you know, we just hit all our standards. It's a big deal in our industry, and I understand it. Uh, and that that really summarizes well what we're trying to do uh, blockwise, where, you know, not everybody knows what. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Not everybody knows what chap is outside of the hospice industry, but you know, anybody inside of it is like, wow, that's uh, that's a big deal. You got zero deficiencies. So. You know, we want, you know, maybe hopefully in, in the, well, not hopefully, but in the beginning, someone's like, they're a member of Block. What is, what does that mean? To, as time goes on, wow, they hit all the standards of Block. You know, that's a big deal. And so, you know, that, that really summarized it well. Thanks for putting that comment in there. I think we lost Josh, um, but hopefully he'll be back soon. <laughs> um, next question is from Gotta Be. And, uh, for an oversight committee that will be overseeing uh, my consumer rights, where does your moral guidelines or moral compass come from? What gives you the conviction to vote a certain way? So that's a that's a good question. So I, I think part of the, the key to that question is that each and every member and, and board member has a different moral and ethical uh, foundation, right? Uh, but we do have a unifying set of values for the block itself, which are are very uh, important to everybody here. For myself, I come from a, a mixture of libertarian, biblical, and military uh, ethics and values for my background. And I don't know if anyone else wants to to share their ethical foundations, but uh, it's very diverse. Yeah, most definitely. And I think another point to this is is all of all of us here are subject matter experts. And and that that sort of gives us this this position of we've we've been trialed and tested in this industry, in this ecosystem. Um, a lot of us are previously investors, both in in the, the classic finance system as well as in the, the arising blockchain and cryptocurrency system. So um it, it, that there are a lot of things that we've seen through our experience that we want to help and, and utilize to, to support everyone else uh, moving forward. Uh, so my background personally, I'm university educated, uh, grew up in the, in the, the Catholic schoolboys system, um, and I, I studied mental health and, and psychology. Um, I've have worked in corporations that, it, that like government, for example, I've worked in the defense force, um, at, not as a defense personnel, but as a uh, advisor and consultant and contractor to them. Um, so that's, a, that's where a lot of my standards come from. I am probably on the, the very stringent side of ethical, uh, opinion, and that's probably why I do stand in this ethical officer role. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my background. Who else wants to go? I'll go. You know, I, what I really like about the question is that what I think we as Block and, and any organization has to keep in mind is the cautionary tale of, you know, you can always become the bad guy over time. And so when does an organization do that? Well, it's when everybody loses sight of the mission, the principles, you know, the, the founding documents. And, and again, you look at our constitution, look at our bylaws. That's how you find what's written down that, that this uh, organization is, is abiding by. It. But, you know, the, the point is, is that a lot of good things start out and go bad at some point. And, you know, we're always going to be, professing you know our adherence to our guidelines but that all comes down to what we do as a community what the members do and that we really stick true to our goals and and you know it's incumbent upon anyone who if they see our conviction slipping or the the blocks conviction slipping is is to call it out and say you know this isn't this isn't um what what you guys started out for and you know again it goes back to other bodies that have done the same so there's a lot of accrediting bodies out there that started out great and then now it all became a you know a money thing um I'll, i won't name anything but there's like a ranking system out there in the us that you know was good for trying to come up with these legitimate rankings or, or how to rank certain entities and then it, it quick well, not quickly but over a decade or so became a situation where you know you pay us enough money we'll tell you how to get the right ranking and so you know it's very important for any organization to keep that in mind great question Yep. I will say that again, our by, to Fred's point, our bylaws, you know, are we've crafted them in such a way that again, this is the board that you see here who you're talking to. We already have two projects, additions and 
Astrals on X that are a part of the, the block. And what's great about the block is that if the board starts to go awry, that the block general assembly, the projects that have met and passed the block audits and are a part of the block as projects, uh, or in some cases, very rare individuals, they, they will have the ability to call a block vote to be able to change a decision that the board has made. Um, but this is like we are this is an organization made up of people. We are focused and we are bylaws promote continuous improvement even when there is some kind of failure. Um, so it is it, we're not we're trying to make sure we don't fail. But if we're going to fail, we're going to fail fast and figure out what what in the world we're going to do to improve. Um, so we, we are here to help and set good standards. And, um, you know, but when if the how do I say this? The blockchain space is developing in such a different way and so quickly that, you know, what was ground under our feet previously may, may shift and we need to figure out what are good standards in the context we're in then. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. Anybody else? Yeah. So on that, I would say that uh, forward facing people don't get at this time and maybe at some time in the future, but currently not um, the insight or luxury into the incredibly intense uh, in-depth conversations that we have amongst the board to come to conclusions and um, our most scary outcomes are uh, when everybody's in consensus uh, kind of straight off the bat um, a lot of us will immediately go into devil's advocate mode and start troubleshooting because we like to field um, the full array of possibilities on things that we approach to come to our conclusions. We, we do have a, a really strong internal debate, which requires um, a mutual respect and the ability to just kind of correct somebody straight out if they think that they're wrong. And we've seen, we've seen that already in this with uh, some things that Patrick and Schmeckles have said. And, and there's a, they're a very powerful mutual respect there and the ability to not have such a strong ego that you can't admit that, okay, yeah, I, I was a little bit wrong there, that kind of stuff. Um, the consensus of opinion that comes from uh, a block vote isn't as simple as a bunch of people randomly without um, context voting a certain way. There is a vote and a reason why that vote occurred from that person and what their opinion is on it. And then there's this really awesome kind of like back and forth until we find the best solution we possibly can as a cohesive unit. Uh, I wanted to say, everyone, I'm, I'm glad I was able to jump on. I know I was late, but I got to leave early. It was a little crazy at the Rispoli house uh, this time period, but I'm glad I got to see everyone's questions, help out where I could, and I'm very excited to, to see where we go from here. Awesome. Well, thanks, Fred, for joining. Uh, feel free to drop off. And uh, we have got about 17 more questions, but they keep coming. We might have to set a, set a drop-off point. It's great to see everyone's excitement and uh, about what's going on here, though. Uh, but we'll see you later, Fred. Thank you, Fred. Awesome. Uh, next question is from Dale. Uh, what about an NFT project without a token? Can it become a block? Uh, can it become block compliant? Uh, if so, uh, will there be an advantage uh, for the NFT project to be block compliant? It's a very great question. And and yes, that uh, it's not something that we've discussed at length, but I do not see why not. Um, there are a lot of other things besides review of a token specifically that, that we can do on, as part of onboarding and reviewing an NFT project. Um, NFT projects are very uh, diverse as well. So there's a lot of projects that choose not to dock. So it would have to be a, a decision made by that NFT project to protect their community in a sense. Um, so yeah, it's a great question, Dale. And I don't see why not. The advantage of, of, of why that NFT project would come to block is the same advantage that any other project would have coming to block. They would have a lot of insight on on from from the team from the, the existing members as well as they'd be providing the purchases of their nft with some form of confidence um, a lot of us have a lot of experience with nfts and then um, we could we could definitely help new new and new starter projects in in, in exploring that so yeah I, I would love to see some nft projects apply right and i'll just throw in an example real quickly recently within the last couple months a project came to me and said he was thinking of releasing a line 
I, I said, let's do a Zoom call. Let's just talk about this. Let's see what you want to do and those kinds of things before this person knew. And I don't want to dox him. His project will be coming out and it's going to have a, a lot of backing and different things like that. But um, he came to me and before he knew it, he was in a Zoom call with uh, six project leads and we all got together and brainstormed and helped him to get right on board with best practices. Now he's going, he's going to go through venture. He's going to do all kinds of stuff. And now he knows a lot more than what he did. His odds of success just went through the roof. And that's the truth of it. Just so that there's not, not quite as many mistakes. Sorry. Sorry, William. JT, is there any way you can delete what's popping up in the chat or is YouTube? Done yeah, done I that? saw that. I was <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> what, what's that? Just go have a look, mate. I'm not going to call it out. On, on oh just, my gosh! Yeah, it's uh, like God of B said, it's gone downhill quickly. <laughs> oh my gosh! What the? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's. I think I got it. Let me know if I didn't. Yeah, no, it, it said you blocked it. So. <clears throat> okay. Woo! All right. That's what we get for having attention on us for too long, I guess. Um. All right. Well, besides that. There's uh, I wanted to just say real quick that uh, we already have a, a block approved NFT project and I believe Astral's uh, on X as well as because uh, they they're only going to be doing uh, NFTs as well oh, as right. Joshua Quali. Uh, as, as well as additions, right? Like, yeah, additions. Yeah, completely they're all missed my mind because they were all an addition. project. My apologies. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to make sure that they, we, they get called out and to say that like, but generally speaking, these projects are going to need, uh, they're not going to be like Josh said, onesies, twosies. It's going to be a project that is going to be doing something with, with NFTs that is uh, going to be consistent and wanting to drive the space forward. So just want to say that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Right Thank through. you, JT. Yep. Spot yep. on. Next question is from Rosemary. What does the, and by the way, thanks for putting question in the colon right there. It just helps so much easier to make sure what the question is. Um, what does the onboarding intake process look like uh, for projects looking for block approval? Uh, do they fill out a form on the website? What is the in initial information required? And I'll, I'll hand that question over to Duncan because he is onboarding. And I will go ahead and share the screen about uh, our well, where you should start. Go ahead, Duncan. Um, so yes, yeah, so onboarding as opposed to designed to be a slightly more informal process. Candidate project uh, uh, wanting to, to join block, getting to know block better, and myself as well. And the whole purpose of it really being to find initial ability and that project for joining okay. block and um, so ordinarily what would happen is you would um fill out the form that we've got on <clears throat> that's a self-assessment form isn't it yeah so initially what you would do is you would contact us via the contact form that is available on the website and the one you might want to show is this jt clarify because i can't see the screen if you can scroll down Oh, the join block um, screen. So this is the join the onboarding process. And this is the self assessment one, is it? Yeah. So the self assessment, uh, just because we've changed Perfect. up the process a little so bit. Yeah, so yes, so self assessment make... will feed into uh, the onboarding. So if you're a pr new project, you want to start at the self assessment form to see if you meet those requirements. Go ahead. That's it. Um, and then really through the onboarding officer, so myself at that present, we will make sure that you have access to the constitution, the code of conduct, the bylaws, because they're the three key documents that underpin the whole organization. And they're the ones that you're absolutely going to need to be able to uh, abide by and eligible to join block. Uh, once you receive those um, and we run through them, the initial kind of exchanges between the project and myself to clarify any issues that they may have. Um, we will jump on a Zoom call where we have the opportunity to meet each other, uh, you know, face to face. Uh, and following that, you then get invited to 
um, fill out the self-assessment form, which then leads into the actual audit questionnaire. Um, and so the audit questionnaire, I believe, unless we've changed the model, is still password locked. So the purpose of that is that people can't just go into the website and immediately jump onto the self-assessment. They have to go through the audit process. And the reason for that is that the self, uh, the auditing process is a very time-consuming uh, and technical job uh, that Josh Crawley does. Um, so we do the onboarding first and only when we've run through that process do they get access to the uh, audit questionnaire form that they need to complete and then the process is handed over to uh, the securities officer. Yep, and then um, after the securities officer, we go into a vote, right? So security officer, sorry, I thought it was specifically uh, the, the early onboarding process. But yeah, so security officer, Josh Qualier has already run through how the audit kind of works. Um, but he will he will audit the questionnaire and audit the project uh, and what they submitted. He may very well jump on a call with them, clarify certain pointers, ask additional questions. There is also a disclosure interview that he will carry out with the project lead um, for that project that I, following all of that, he will then submit uh, the results to the block board. And following that, if they have been found to meet all the criteria, they will then be uh, put to a vote um, and and um, and then onboarded. Cool. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about the onboarding process, again, you just go to join block on our page. Uh, you will have the form there for any project uh, that wants to fill this out. Uh, if you do pass the self-assessment, that will feed uh, into our onboarding email. So uh, you'll be able to uh, essentially, if you pass this, you you will get you, you've essentially applied um, through that process. If and if you want a visual, there is a uh, a download here of what that process looks like. This part needs to be updated. This is supposed to be using that self assessment form, um, but you can go there. Let me just go back here real quick. And also, if you are interested and if you want to come prepared to the meeting for uh, with Duncan, you can go download the Constitution, Bylaws, and Code of Conduct and read them ahead of time. Uh, projects that do their due diligence ahead of time will speed through the process, I'll tell you that much. Um, uh, any other answers to that question or uh, any other things we wanna cover, guys? No, but for the sake of the video's timeline and people consuming all the information, can you scoop maybe five more choice questions and we'll try to get uh, answers on the really important questions i will try to they're all really good i'll, I'll try to pick them and so if we're going to call it for the sake of time i do apologize everyone but it has been a long live stream and thank you all for sticking with us so long uh let me find uh a good uh for, first i just want to see why not you know is really quick is xr doge a part of the block no uh, xr doge is not currently part of the block um, yeah, so to expand on that a little bit, so XR Doge is a uh, a project with a troubled past, and they had a different ownership. And then uh, the new project owners approached me for some assistance. Uh, so I've been advising them basically pro bono just on, on how they can turn things around for that project and uh, help fix their public relations uh, PR um, and their image. And part of my advice for that was that they adhere to block standards and the constitution, even if they are currently um, due to the acts of the former team, they would not pass the audit and they would not, um, you know, pass the block standard quite yet or, or not uh, during the time that they started working with us, but they are doing their best to adhere to those standards so that in the future, they can be a fully um, approved block member. And again, this is speaking to a comment that I made earlier that even though there is a troubled past, that we're still happy to work with projects if they're going to do the right thing and stick to the regulations that we put forward and the standards we put forward. So even if, if you have had a 
Like, is, is there a worse pass than Exide Doge? I'm not too sure. Like, that's that they're, 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 the fact that they're still moving forward is is very, very impre- impressive. And it's, it's commendations to both Alex and Vicky as the devs there. Um, so if, if they can now move forward, sticking to what we're sit- setting for block, then how excellent is that for all the XR Doge holders? They are, they've, they've, they've gone through hell and, and they can potentially come back. So, um, yeah, it's it, they're a great a great use case as well for the block, I believe. They're they're welcome to still apply, and that's everyone is welcome to apply with where they're at. Uh, we'll see how they they stand up to things, and uh, I don't believe we've they've gone through our process yet. So they they I will just say that they are welcome to apply. I didn't mean to that uh, to become a thing. I thought it was just going to be a real quick answer. So, um, but we do have. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven essential um, questions I'd like to go through before we end up, guys. Uh, I've tried to narrow it down as best I can. Um, one is, and we'll get through these. Uh, also, if we could keep our answers more brief, we'll get through them quicker. Uh, projects wish to move uh, in the right direction and work towards being a block member. Who should they reach out to? Is there a correct channel or do they just reach out to any block uh, of the block council? And uh, I would say uh, they're welcome to, you know, use the contact in our inquiries and we can try to hook them up with the right person. Uh, every inquiry might be different. Yep. So and Duncan Glendinning from Treasury is our onboarding officer. So if they're ready to apply, that's uh, the first person they're probably going to interface with. But if they do approach any one of us, we're, we're going to be open to it and we're just going to point you in the right direction, uh, depending where you are in the process. And also, just to add to that, that as JT pointed out, the documents, we can see it on screen here, the constitution, the bylaws, and the code of conduct, the projects that join need to already agree to abide by those documents. So any project without even submitting a form with us can download those documents, familiarize themselves with them, and abiding by the principles that are laid down within each of them. Um, because if they do that, their their job to get into block is going to be so much easier than having to go through it, then find out which which aspects of their project are not compliant. If they are adhering to these documents, they will very most likely uh, well they'll definitely be eligible for block, and they will there's a higher likelihood that they're going to go straight through. So that's something that any project can do without even even clicking a submission button and contacting us at all. Okay. Awesome. Um, let's go and let's get uh, this one. Uh, any regulation rules, conditions on freezing of assets by a project or owners uh, and black holing? So we don't specifically have uh, rules on those. So as everyone knows, Reaper and Reaper's products are not black hole. Uh, we frown upon freezing, but that's not to say that there couldn't be a inventive new project that uses that in some manner that would be um, appropriate as long as it was transparent. Uh, however, if we if we were to dig through and, and basically found that the project had been freezing customer funds um, in a way that seemed malicious, that would obviously fail the audit. Or if they were not black holed and they didn't have justification for that in their tokenomics, that would also fail the audit. Cool. Uh, moving on to the next one. Um... There were several versions of this, but I cut it down to one. Uh, will there be an intermittent check on projects to make sure they still adhere to council requirements? Most definitely. This is something we actually tossed up and turned about for a while. And and the, the way we thought about it and the final approach we've taken is, is almost similar to the way a, a corporation might drug test their employees. So it's sort of like, uh, just be prepared to be ordered to that any time. That there should be never a dull or, or down moment in, in your project's time where you are not standing by what, what you have signed up for with the block. So it's just be prepared at all times and an audit may come at any time. Another reason why is an ethics complaint may come through to myself or to one of the other members of block. And that may uh, be the trigger for an audit at a, uh, at a random uh, time. In, uh, yeah, random point in time. 
And I just want to add there real quick that anyone who has an ethics complaint needs to be able to call out in our, uh, you will be much more replied to and you will be able to hunt down much more if we understand the situation as well as exactly the bylaw, code of conduct, or part of the constitution that they have violated. So please make sure that if you're filing an ethics complaint that you understand what exactly our standards are and you're not just complaining about something that you know is is different but if there is something we need to consider to add to increase our structure we will definitely be open to listening to, to that as well so i just know that, that there could potentially be a flood of complaints to you james i just want to make sure that like you you, you get the right thing so <laughs> <laughs> thank you jt <laughs> all right but not about block projects i don't know and don't and please we're not here again for the whole space these are just block projects so if you have a problem with patrick or or william or, or duncan yeah, uh, please. Those are the projects we need focused on, not not everything else in the in the space. So, with that said, personally, I'm I'm open to just chatting about any project. So, if you want to come to me personally outside of block, more than welcome to. Yep, I'll, his uh, his Twitter should be in the description. <laughs> right, and on that note, just kind of like Josh Qualley doesn't do his own security audit uh pl complaints um that would be against schmeckles or james who is on ethics would go to patrick if he isn't there then they would go to me so just so you guys know yep they've uh again all that's in our bylaws and we tried to if they find any gaps uh we're always open to feedback and uh interested in that if you want to give feedback about any of our structural elements uh please do that through the general inquiry through the contact us form on the uh the website I will be reading those. Um, next is from Curly Bill. Rather than being in the US and them, uh, is there a potential in the future for collaboration between other regulatory bodies in the crypto space? So definitely. Uh, and what we do here is all about it's collaboration. It's us and them. Yeah, us and them. Us and them, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we're all about collaboration with other entities. So even if the SEC, even if Gary Gensler himself wanted to have a conversation, we would be more than happy to, to sit down with Gary and talk about the why, what, when, where, how. And, uh, you know, we may have more or less influence than, uh, you know, the SEC, but we're more than happy to have those discussions. We are going to be, uh, you know, approaching different legislatures and uh, county and state bodies throughout the U.S. to educate, and we do plan on uh, approaching it lobbyists and politicians in, in certain wow. manners from an educational uh, angle as well. Yep. All right. I'm sure that will spawn a ton more questions we can answer in another live AMA, but. Um... We'll see more when we uh, we get there. Next question is from Locked. Uh, if someone currently or doesn't have anything to contribute to Block, can he or she still volunteer just to sit in to learn? Uh, there's so much to learn from the experience of all you not to be involved. Um, I'm not sure if you mean sitting in on our meetings or, or being around. We're definitely here to produce some educational content. So there's going to be that element to it. Uh, but I don't know. What, what do you all think? What do you, what do yeah, you think? Not, not, not to our yeah. board meetings, but definitely we're going to be looking to do roundtables and, and things of the like of what we're doing now to, to invite the public into these conversations. Um, and I just want to say you're never, your voice is always going to be heard. So if you ever have anything to say, we have that contact form on our website and all of us are very approachable. Um, but the board meetings have to remain closed for, for many reasons, but yeah, um, that they won't be open to the public. Yeah. Right. So we already have it documented. It's um, we have our board meetings and we try to get through uh, important issues and kind of just discuss them out. But there are uh, regularly scheduled events for the public to engage us uh, through our infrastructure already. Yep. We have uh, we'll ha probably try to eventually create more. Uh, sorry, to communicate better to the public in terms of our you know what our calendar is what those events are um but we'll as the calendar develops we may put out like a month at a time uh we'll see how that develops right now we're just we tried to get everything stand up and now we're here so we can onboard uh new projects um 
So let's get done with that one. Uh, we've got two, two more left. Uh, nine to five. Freedom, uh, is there a preferred external security auditor and process? Uh, it, and that basically that goes to say, is someone outside of block or is it all done from within block? Sorry if I uh, was missed or discussed earlier. So we do have some connections to third party um, vendors as well as chain analysis to do um, a, a deeper dive into certain wallets if, if it comes to that or if we believe that is necessary. For our purposes so far, um, the internal auditor in the XRPL has been very capable. We haven't really needed that, uh, but it is available to us. Cool. Right, and um, most people are in just the XRPL here, but for my experience with Zoge, most ecosystems have some kind of oversight or guardian body like what Block is. I know for HBAR, we're uh, verifying with Sentinel now and with uh, Algorand, we went through uh, Tiny Man and the Algorand Foundation to get our, our stamps of approval, basically. But we, we will end up um, in time here probably linking up with many more as projects outside of our own uh, reach start to become more of a common in block. We'll, we'll probably be having some more of that. Yep. And, um... Oh, I think that's it for that. A last question for the night uh, is it's kind of a three parter. Uh, it's from Joe or J R O. Um, I understand the mission and vision of Block, but what does Block actually do? And uh, I'm not I'm not quite done. I'm looking at the other parts. Is it purely auditing? And uh, to further clarify, it says, I understand the mission and vision, but what, what do y'all actually do? Is it purely interviewing projects and giving a block stamp of approval? And so, so, so largely what we do is we build out the standards and best practices. We'll war game them or theorize on them until we found fault um, to the point that it is reduced to the most successful um, path of least resistance for projects. And in doing that, we're also able to create a, basically a guideline or a roadmap for projects to move forward and to grow with minimum risk. So we're reducing risk to the consumer uh, as we build those standards. Right, and for projects coming into Block, um, what they can expect is Block as, as a body is essentially an incredibly powerful, uh, well-versed group of people with varying skill sets and come together as something one would consider a think tank. Um, in many cases, people may have an issue or want to create or deploy something. And we just, we come together and we assist one another in these things. Um, like if Zoge wanted blockchain voting because Reaper has it and he's offered it, I could have that. I, I don't have any intent or need for it at this time, but the the offers that have been made to me specifically through Block are more more magnificent than one would expect. Like it's it's really good stuff. So what does that do for like an end user? How how does that uh, fulfill our mission or vision? It makes the projects that are within Block uh, much more capable than those that are without block. And that then translates into a better yield or result for end users. Gotcha. All right. Uh, well, that was the final question for the night. Um, I definitely want to say thank you to everyone. And again, if you're watching this later, I uh, would love to hear from you. Um, we, we really do. We've come together. It's been like uh, <laughs> my... You know, my one of my was telling a coworker, he's like, "You birthed the baby." It's like it's it's taken nine months, in, in terms of like the time it's taken. Of course, we haven't like done that, but you know, this is this is has been a, a huge undertaking to try to figure out, uh, you know, what all these standards are, and it's going to continue to be. We're probably going to learn a lot uh, from the different projects that we're onboarding. Uh, we already have, and uh, and that's helped to develop our standards for the ones that uh, have and have not made it. Uh, but we're here to bring good actors together in the blockchain space and to help 
move forward uh, and advance this technology and to bring clarity ourselves uh, as those who are developing on the blockchain. I speak not as my not as myself, but you know, for for these projects. <laughs> um, but I just want to say, as a as a content creator, uh, I'm very thankful to be uh, a part of this. I'm very thankful, and I hope and encourage other content creators to to utilize block and their standards to to get educated on it, to grow on them. And of course, if y'all have any feedback, whether you're in the public, whether you're a project, uh, something we missed, something that is vital, something you think could be could help us, reach out. Uh, we are a volunteer organization. We'll get back to everyone as soon as we can. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Any last thoughts, guys? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll weigh in real quick. For anybody who didn't know, the website is block.foundation. You can also find it at, on Twitter at Block Oversight. Uh, it'll link you to the website. And um, just thanks a lot for attending, everybody. I'm, I'm really proud of uh, the last near year of work that has went into this and all of the people who um, aren't even present who contributed to it. So thank you. Awesome. Anyone else? Yeah, I definitely concur with William. It's 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 great that we had so many people here on our launch, had so many great questions, a lot of things that that like usually if there's a question asked, someone else has also got that question. So thank you so much for asking those. Um, just I want to remind everyone, we are here for the ecosystem, for the community. So if you have any questions, concerns, anything, just get in contact with us. You can do it anonymously if you need to, but um, there's there's no monsters here, nothing scary. We're, we're, we're here to work with you. So we're very approachable. Um, please just drop, drop a line. Yeah. Yeah. You won't get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just, I've had to. Like, so, I'm, not I'm, sure saying? Saying <laughs> I'm sure someone's thinking it, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Duncan, Patrick. Yeah, no, just to say, same as everyone else, thank you very much. It's meant a lot that people have turned out today. The, you've, the questions you contributed have been really excellent one that's allowed us to dive in uh, to what we're doing without uh, just spending hours and hours, uh, um, yeah, uh, reading off documents. So it's been it's been all for that interaction. Appreciate it. And um, and yeah, I, I'd always open. You know, it's it's the it's the fruits of nine months of hard work, but it's also effectively the start of the journey or the journey that we'll be, uh, and his input will make this stronger. Um, so yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, thank you. Uh, and I guess that leaves me. So I just want to say that I, I really appreciate all of the members of Block and the uh, the General Assembly for sharing in the vision. And when I first had this idea, you know, way back, I, I wasn't sure that I'd have the buy-in and I wasn't sure that people were going to spend their time working on this. And I didn't do this. They, they did this together. Um, so I really, truly appreciate all of you. And I, I really hope that what we're building here and what we've we've designed is going to truly provide value and a service to this community. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Uh, well, I'm JT, and these are the founders of Block, and we're out. <laughs>